just wanted to be able to say that. So, so done. You're not uh, the so... only chair who's ever wanted to say that. <laughs> <laughs> just to let everybody know we are live now and the recording is started. Do we need to ask our the guests to put like a ZZ in front of their names? Are you going to be using the participants box, Joe? I've got my own list. Um, Karen Ann, are you going to be able to call roll without looking at the list there? Yeah, because I do it verbally. And we used to do that ZZ thing in Adobe because it would sort the participants that way. Zoom does not do that. It really isn't that helpful in Zoom. Adobe Connect used to sort people really easily that way, but. Well, it is eight o'clock, so I will call us to order. Welcome everybody. Um, the first item on the draft agenda is opportunity for public comment. So if any member, non-member of the LNC would like to address the committee, uh, just raise your hand and we'll call on you for a minute or two. So I got Mr. Fulner and Mr. Pincho, uh, and then we'll go on through it. So Mr. Fulner, go right ahead. Hey, I just wanted to say uh, congratulations to all you guys who got uh, re-elected or elected for the first time. Uh, I appreciate the commitment to openness and allowing uh, everyone in our party to have a say and hear what's going on. And I look forward to a great next year and uh, look forward to the meeting. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Fulmer. Uh, Mr. Pincho, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, you're muted right now, sir. All right, unmuted. Hey. Okay, uh, my family says Pinchot, but it's not important. Mr. Um, Pinchot, I'll make a note of it. Thank you, Mr. Bishop Henchman. Um, I must admit your name is a little bit off-putting, but that's fine. <laughs> I hope you're used to it by now. <laughs> um, I would like to thank you, especially for, and everybody else that's, um, made a point of uh, the notion, the, the powerful notion that we must be as open as possible and, and you know, the committee especially about what is going on and what is being considered and so forth. Um, and um, I'm glad you all got elected. Um, but uh, what did I mean to say originally? Um, Oh, yes. Um, as you recall, at the end of the in-person session in Orlando, several people, including me, were frantically trying to allow the LNC or whoever to um, propose additional um, sessions of the convention so that we could get to platform and so forth that we didn't get to. I would be positively, uh, I would you know, be very behind any idea that would help us to get more of our agenda done. It's it's a shame that every year so much of it we don't even get to, especially the platform. Of course, it was more important to get the committee elected or we don't want to have an empty committee. That would be horrible. Um, but I, uh, I'm looking forward to any way possible that we can um, extend that convention or have additional extraordinary online conventions or whatever that will be practical for addressing more of our agenda. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pinchot. Uh, Mr. Requero, Florida. Um, good evening, everyone. I want to say congratulations to Chairman Bishop Henchman. I got to get used to saying that. Chairman Bishop Henchman, uh, Secretary Go Harvey. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> Vice Chair Mullman and, and everybody, all the at-larges and everybody that was uh, elected. We had uh, a hell of a convention, a historic event. It was historic for more than, for many reasons, because 
obviously of the situation that we're facing right now. Uh, and it was very controversial, obviously, whether we should have it or not. But I think it shows, I think it was important that we had that convention to show who we are and why we're libertarians and what the philosophy is about. Um, I have more to say on it and my, my thoughts are all scrambled right now. So I'll just quote something that Kara Schultz wrote um, at the beginning of July. It says, I have faith in our members. Our entire philosophy is built on the idea of mutually beneficial relationships, that good ideas don't require force, that good decisions are based on education and dialogue, that not everyone will behave in ways that, that don't hurt their fellow man, but the vast majority will. If that position, if we position that it's not true, then the philosophy is a lie. And I don't believe that. If I believe in all of you, I believe in our philosophy, I don't believe that my activism has been based on a lie. So for me, it was really, really, me personally, not everybody, I can't speak for everybody else, but for me personally, that convention was, was special because it shows that even in the face of adversity in a world set free, we're gonna face all kinds of things. We're gonna face sickness. We're gonna face all kinds of problems. And it starts with trust. It starts with believing in your fellow man to get past all that. If we want, if we, if we can't do that, if we couldn't have had this convention, how could we have a world set free in our lifetime? So thank, thank you to the LMC, thank you to the COC, thank you to everybody that made this happen. We all came together. We didn't want to disenfranchise anybody. It was a great time. And I look forward to all the good things that are coming now with this, uh, with this new LMC. Thank you. Thank you, Omar. Uh, next, I have Mr. Tunevich. How close was I? Close enough for non-government work, Mr. Uh -huh. Chairman. <laughs> um, thank you and congratulations to this new body, this new LNC. Um, you know, pl plenty of work to do, right? Right in the middle of a presidential campaign, we're all going to be hopping on that. But the one point I wanted to make as you begin what is, a, in essence, a new relationship as a board is the notion of board governance. Um, there is a great body of academic work out there that shows that um, an effective board, one that works well together, gets the results that they seek to get, is not a happenstance. It's not a, we'll just kind of see how it works out. Uh, there are steps that organizations such as ours, that boards such as yours can take um, to help ensure that things go well. And if there was one thing, and this is from a you know, life member since 1998, I know we had a lot of life members uh, during the convention, and that's great. But you know, if there's one thing I could say is investigate, pursue board governance training, you'll really be glad you did. And I'd be happy to serve uh, in any uh, capacity to be of assistance in that regard. Thank you all and best of luck. Thank you, Mark. And uh, if you could email me some details on that, I think I can I, I can forward along to everybody. Happy uh, to do so. Happy to do so. Thank you. Next, I have Colin User One. Uh, hello, this is Starchild. Am I on? Yes. Hi, Starchild. Go ahead. Hi. Thank you, Joe. Um, and thanks for sending me call in info. Um, so. First, congratulations to the OMC. I'm sorry we didn't have an in-person meeting at the end of the convention, but I'm glad to uh, have everybody here now. Um, the issue I'd like to mention today is, is one that I think would be important for you all to focus on is making our website more interactive. Uh, I understand there's been uh, perhaps some work done on this with Dan Fishman. I don't know exactly what's going on with that or the status of it, but I, I think we're, we're missing an opportunity in terms of both bringing traffic to the site and making the party uh, more interactive, giving more people more opportunities to participate and, and keep abreast of what the party's putting out and spread that information and so on. If we had a system where people could, members could have profiles um, and also uh, like a page to keep track of things like uh, LNC votes, which motions are on the table, a uh, place where people could weigh in on that, perhaps a little sandbox area where they could talk about uh, uh, proposed language for motions. You could see like which LNC members were sponsoring which motions. Uh, I think you all on the LNC would find it um, uh, useful and, and helpful as well as uh, being a pro transparency, bottom up governance kind of thing. And um, this could also be used as a way to raise money, for example, by giving people sort of extra little bells or whistles or recognition on their profiles that don't necessarily influence anything. So we're not selling influence in the party or anything like that. But way to raise money and kind of give our donors some kind of recognition or extra something to make them feel special 
and uh, be seen by their fellow members for their contributions. So uh, if anybody wants to pursue that and like any help or further assistance as far as uh, ideas and things on how this could work, then I'm happy to be involved in that effort. Thank you, Star Child. Uh, does anyone else from the gallery wish to be recognized? We have a minute left on this item. Seeing none, we'll close public comment. And the next item on the draft agenda is calling of the attendance roll. Madam Secretary. One moment. Right now, I will call out loud, and if everyone could just say if they're here or not. Uh, Mr. Bishop Hen Henchman obviously is here. Mr. Molman? Here. Mr. Hagen? Here. I am here. Ms. Epke? Here. Mr. Longstreth? Here. Mr. Radsev? Here. Did I pronounce that correctly? Much better than most. Um, if it's wrong, give me some kind of phonetic and I'll never get it wrong again. Uh, it's Raud Sep. Oh, okay. Raud. Okay. I will get that right now because I'll, because it took me forever to get Bill U. Okay. Uh, Ms. Sarwark. Here. Mr. Smith. Here. Joshua Smith. Yeah, mark him down is absent. He can pipe, get in if he's having issues. Um, Mr. Wen. I think he's Mr. still on duty. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Uh, Mr. Nikaela. Present. Mr. Nana. I'm here. Mr. Hewitt. He is on the way, but not here yet. Ms. Hogarth. Here. Mr. Phillips. Here. Ms. Bilyeu. I'm here. Mr. Coburn. <coughs> Mr. Coburn. Here. Thank you. Mr. Lucchini. Here. Here. Mr. S Thank you. Mr. Sexton. I am present. Mr. Hall. Here. Mr. Fiera. Present. Mr. Valenti. I'm present. Another name that I need a phonetic, if I don't get it right, Mr. Bugman. It's B Buffman, but I'm present, like B-U-F-F-M-A-N. Got it, that's perfect, thank you. Ms. Adams. I'm here. Mr. Bowen. Present. And who do we have here for staff? I see we have Mr. Fishman. Are there, is there any other members of staff present? I'm here, Karen Ann. Um, I'm sorry, who is that? It's Ms. DeSisto. Okay, thank you. So um, Mr. Kraus or Mr. Pizzell or Ms. Schultz not here? I am here, Robert. Uh, okay, Robert. is uh, Ms. Schultz here or Mr. Pizzell? Okay, thank you. Um, so Mr. Chair, who I do have as absent is uh, Mr. Smith. Mr. Hewitt and Mr. Went. Are any of those are any of those people here and or got in before we're? No. Okay. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Um, next item is the adoption of the agenda. I've distributed a chair's draft agenda earlier today. Um, there is one change I'd like to make to it. And that is uh, Mr. Redpath taking full advantage of the fact that he no longer has to sit through the entire meeting, would like to move uh, his committee report for ballot access to be immediately after the adoption of the agenda so that he can go out and collect more signatures. And I'm amenable to accommodating that request. So that's in there as item 7A and moving that to immediately after adoption of the agenda. Are there any other... Uh, Proposed changes to the draft agenda. Seeing none, the chair would entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. Moved second. by Ms. Harlos. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Hagen. Is there any objection?
Seeing no objection, the agenda stands adopted. And Madam Secretary, Mr. Hewitt's joined the meeting. Thank you, Chair. Thank you for acknowledging. I won't be on here for more than about 15 minutes. And the rest of the time, uh, Tim will do a fine job of uh, standing in for, I'm here in uh, Caesar's Palace where Freedom Fest was supposed to be. And I will be going to dinner with a uh, former California State Senator who might end up being the next governor of Nevada. So I got to show up for that. And, uh, but you guys have a good time. I just wanted to check in brand new, brand new LNC and uh, happy to see all of you here. Great to hear it. Thank you. Yeah. Um, well, given the, the change we just did in the agenda, next we'll call up uh, Mr. Redpath to let us know how ballot access is going. Mr. Redpath. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I will say that at this moment, I am, uh, of course, always <laughs> this time every four years, it can be kind of a roller coaster. Uh, I remain cautiously optimistic that the presidential ticket can be on the ballot will be on the ballot in all 50 states plus D.C. Um, there are, I believe, 14 states uh, where we um, still are do not have presidential ballot status. Uh, eight of them have deadlines August 7 or before, and I'm going to mainly deal with them. Then we have a break. After August 7, things get substantially easier uh, at that point. We have a whole one week break until the next deadline, August 14 in Iowa. And uh, and all of the signatures are the pretty low numbers after August 7. So I'm, I'm gonna deal with these dates right now. Um, our first two deadlines are July 27, a week from tomorrow. That's Monday, July 27, Maine and New Jersey. And uh, Maine right now, I got some good news and Christopher Thrasher is on the phone. And first of all, I wanna give a shout out to uh, Christopher Thrasher who uh, left Nebraska where he's about to attend Creighton University Law School and went and drove to Maine because we really had a big problem in Maine. Uh, fortunately, I was able to locate a uh, petitioning firm uh, that had done initiatives in Maine uh, through connections I have with FairVote. I used to be on the board of FairVote as well and through people connected with Fairboat, I was able to locate a positioning firm that has really turned the numbers in Maine. Uh, and I just got a report from a Christopher Thrasher saying we're up to 3,900 uh, gross signatures, total signatures in Maine. We need 4,000 valid, but that is, is very good news that came in today. So I think we can keep it going and get enough signatures in Maine to finish out that petition drive uh, no later than, than the 27th of July. Uh, in New Jersey, they are, uh, uh, they right now got uh, in the ballpark of 600 signatures that they've hired a paid petitioner. Uh, we definitely need signatures in New Jersey. It isn't over yet, uh, but they have hired a paid petitioner and I'm going to be in close contact with Dan Krause uh, and New Jersey is paying for that paid petitioner, but we need volunteer signatures in New Jersey. Okay, we definitely need volunteer signatures in New Jersey to uh, finish that out strong. We then have, uh, we have two deadlines coming up uh, on August 3rd, two weeks from tomorrow. That is Monday, August 3, Maryland and Pennsylvania. Both have 5,000 valid cities needed. Uh, the Pennsylvania drive got off to a slow start and unfortunately we lost our, our lawsuit there. Uh, it has been appealed by Oliver Hall to the Third Circuit Court of Appeals where we hope we will fare better but right now we have staffed up with paid petitioners in Pennsylvania. We have at least 3,000 gross signatures. We need 5,000 net, that's 5,000 valid. Uh, Daryl Bonner is returning from Alabama to Pennsylvania. Uh, he'll arrive there Tuesday to work with uh, people there uh, for the final two weeks of that drive. Uh, in Maryland, we need 5,000 valid signatures. We are at 4,700 uh, gross signatures. Uh, so we probably need about 2,300 more signatures. I'm working with Bob Johnson, the state chair, on that. Uh, we have just staffed up with some more petitioners, most of whom are inexperienced, but one of the inexperienced uh, has begun turning the numbers better. So I've, and I've asked Bob Johnson to get daily signature reports. We've got to stay on top day, day by day by day on the petition drives that uh, close out two weeks from now. August 4 is a Tuesday, Wisconsin deadline, 2,000. Uh, 2,000 valid signatures. 
right now between volunteers and paid, they think they have about 700 gross signatures, uh, but they are uh, soon going to have four paid petitioners there. Uh, so they should be in good shape with four paid petitioners to, to close that out. Alaska's in, in good shape. That's over. Uh, Scott Kohlhaas did a great job running that petition drive in Alaska. Uh, we got 5,000, at least 5,000 gross signatures. We needed 3212 net. So the Alaska drive is over. That's in good shape. Now we come to New Hampshire, which is a weak spot right here. New Hampshire is not doing well right now. It, of course, it, it, we have a deadline of Wednesday, August 5. So that is 17 days from now is the deadline. We need uh, 1,500 valid signatures uh, in both of the two congressional districts in New Hampshire. And uh, right now, Christopher Thrasher reports to me he's also interacting with people in New Hampshire. We have only 851 gross signatures right now for the uh, uh, Jorgensen uh, petition there. Um, they uh, won't go into the complication, but, but uh, into all the details. But right now, total, we have only 851 uh, gross signatures for the presidential ticket. Um, New Hampshire is definitely a weak spot right now. Uh, we do have, however, uh, Justin petitioning. Uh, we need more volunteer signatures in New Hampshire, that is for sure. And Christopher Thrasher is going to be talking with our uh, petition company in Maine to see if people are available, and they probably will be. New Hampshire has a court hearing on Wednesday, July 22, uh, according to Daryl Perry, but the, and we may win that, but the problem is, is a possible appeal. And at this point, um, even if we win, for instance, in Pennsylvania, uh, uh, we uh, 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 we just we can't stop because of a possible appeal, even if we win because of a possible appeal. So um, we need to carry forth in New Hampshire. Um, we you know, the lawsuits have worked sometimes this year, and other times they have not. So we need to move forward with the uh, uh, with the uh, petition drive. I think even if we win the lawsuit, do the risk of losing on appeal. And then Washington State, I heard secondhand that Washington may be over. That is an August 7 deadline. But I heard that uh, Joe Jorgensen was out there uh, for a rally or several rallies uh, this weekend in Washington. And they had a big petitioning event for events and got a lot of signatures that will more than cover the 1,000 invalid signatures that they need in Washington State. But that is, that is uh, secondhand. So I'm not exactly sure of that. And then, so that gets us through August 7, and uh, and then after that, uh, just quickly, Iowa 1,500 valid signatures, August 14, Minnesota 2,000 valid signatures, August 18, Alabama 5,000 valid signatures, August 20, but we already have about 4,000 gross signatures in Alabama, also August 20, Tennessee 275 sigs, that's easy. Virginia just won a lawsuit last week, cutting the number of signatures from 5,000 to 2,500. That has an August 21 deadline. That won't be difficult. Rhode Island, last but not least, September 4 with 1,000 valid signatures. So that's how it goes right now. We've got our work cut out for us. We've got good news in Maine, uh, but we still have all told, is it 13 states where we're still gathering signatures at this point in one way or another? Um, so we need to finish out this strong, but the most intense period now is, is going to be from now through uh, through, well, if Washington's done, that was August 7th, but the most intense period will be over the next two and a half weeks leading up to the New Hampshire deadline on August 5th. And that is the update on ballot access. Thank you, Mr. Redpath. Are there any other members of the ballot access committee that wish to add anything to that? Christopher Thrasher on the on the call. I'd, I'd like him to speak, if at all possible. Yes, I think he is. Uh, yes, indeed. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, thank you, Mr. Redpath. Uh, as, as Mr. Redpath reported, uh, definitely got some good news as far as signatures in Maine go. Uh, so I, I think he's pretty pretty clearly gotten the uh, the latest out there. Uh, but it was a little touch and go for a little while, but it does appear that we're, we're well on our way to uh, getting the, it's 4,000 valid with a maximum turn in of uh, 6,000 signatures. 
Now, of course, the logistical issues are, are going to be fun because Maine is one of those situations where you have to turn in the signatures to each town uh, and then pick them up and take them to the Secretary of State. And, of course, Maine has about 500 towns. So uh, it's going to be a fun couple weeks, but uh, I do believe that we'll be able to, uh, to get over the hump there. Um, I am in contact with the State Party of New Hampshire and hope to be uh, in, in contact with, with some others uh, involved in that petition as well to try to bump up their numbers so uh so far uh we're, we're on target certainly uh new hampshire and a couple other states uh you'll we'll need to keep uh keep the fires lit to uh, to make sure we get over the humps but uh definitely good news in maine today thank you chris is being modest um Bill did mention this, but Chris dropped everything in Nebraska, drove across the country to Maine in order to kind of pull us out of a ditch there. Um, so greatly appreciate it. And hit on the brilliant idea of getting signatures from people standing in line waiting to vote on Tuesday, um, which, you know, that probably going to be a high validity rate from that. So uh, very good, uh, very good work from Chris. Thank you. We, we might be done there right now that hadn't rained last Tuesday in Maine. Yeah, that was uh, we had a bit of a monsoon uh, and, and just a little uh, little anecdote. Very interesting. I got lucky because I was uh, next to the place where people were actually turning in their absentee ballots uh, where there was this was in Portland, Maine. And interestingly enough, there were a uh, probably by but maybe 10, 20 times more people turning in their uh, absentee ballots. Uh, rather than actually going to the polls. So that was, that was an interesting little thing to notice. Uh, awesome. But, uh, but th thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and like I said, we get, we have to keep the fires lit here, but I think we'll, we should be able to get over the hump. Excellent. Uh, questions or comments from the committee for anybody on the ballot access committee, just raise your hand and I'll recognize you. Ms. Adams. I, I, I just want, I'm sorry. Oh. Sorry, Bill, go ahead, and then I we'll go to thank my members of the Ballot Access Committee um, uh, from the past term, uh, Christopher Francher, Richard Winger, John Phillips, and Dustin Nana, uh, and uh, their contributions to the committee. But like I said, in particular, I certainly was not in the position to drop everything and go to Maine, and it's just, um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of successful petition drives uh, succeed on uh, serendipity, <laughs> frankly, more than I would like. And this is one of those times where we had we had the right person with the right availability and ballot access experience. And again, it's, uh, Mr. Thrasher was a godsend in this instance. And uh, yeah, good luck to him in law school after this. Uh, let's not open the champagne yet, though. We still got. Well, I know <laughs> we'll, we'll celebrate when we get there. But I, I sincerely appreciate all the kind words. Thank you. All right, I have Ms. Adams, then Mr. Coburn. Ms. Adams. Hello. So my question, Bill and Chris, would be, um, it sounds like you had a pretty solid day in Pennsylvania. Yesterday, I spoke to Mr. Sheets yesterday around noon, and um, he informed me that Pennsylvania was hanging in around 2,500 signatures, and then today you reported 3,000. Do you anticipate um, being able to kind of keep that momentum, or are you going to need additional push in Pennsylvania? Well, with Daryl Bonner going back there from Alabama and his connections with uh, fellow petitioners in Pennsylvania, and I also want to say, I mean, there are a few people who are just amazing. Jen Moore is doing a great job in Pennsylvania coordinating the petition drive. She is the Eastern Vice Chair of the LPPA. She is on it. I mean, and, and, and she really knows how to run a petition drive. And... Uh, uh, it, it, so I would say this, so we, and we've got people in Western, we've had several people come up from West Virginia to petition in the Pittsburgh area. So it's, um, but, and we're insist on daily reporting. We've got to follow this because I will say one thing, petition drives can tend to snowball and you really need daily reporting at this point. You don't want to get too many signatures and spend too much money. So, um, but she's definitely up to it. And I'm very impressed with her and the job she's doing. Thank you. I have Mr. Coburn, then Ms. Harlos. Mr. Coburn. Um, so I might have missed it. Um, you noted that we have 600 gross signatures in New Jersey. What is the threshold there? 800 valid signatures 
Um, and like I said, they've hired a paid petitioner, but we definitely need uh, we definitely need volunteer signatures at this point in New Jersey. There, there's no doubt about it. Uh, and but it's 800 valid signatures with a deadline of Monday, July 27. I have Ms. Harlos and then Mr. Roudset. Ms. Harlos. Okay, I might ask you a, a question that's kind of off the wall, but a member had asked me and I promised I would explore. Um, what is the status of our ballot access in Guam? I know, off the wall. I think, no, I think, uh, you know, I'm not sure. I know uh, that Scott Kohlhoff is always big about that. Um, I think that was him. Yeah, he's always big about that. Uh, no, Ash. A uh, Gort Gus Typhoon Hailer. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll put it in my planner. Um, actually, I'm busy tomorrow. I have to I have to I've got signatures I have to turn in in Springfield, Illinois tomorrow because I'm running for U.S. House. Um, may I ask the chairman to inquire about that? Could you speak with Mr. Fishman and ask him about Guam? We'll I follow will. up on that. I, right. Yes, I found if Mr. Fishman's on the line. Yes, if you, I think we filed something, but I'm not certain about that. I had an inquiry out to whoever on Johnson Weld 16 took care okay. of it. So. I, I think all it takes is a letter. I believe it's just filing a letter. If you don't mind, I'm going to like um, write you just to confirm that you're looking into it, CC, Mr. Bishop Henchman and Mr. Fishman with this member so that you have his contact information in case we ever know anything. Okay. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Let's see, uh, Ms. Adams, second round. No, I just can't lower my hand. Oh, okay. there's no option for me to do that. All right, we'll figure that out. I have uh, Mr. Molman and then Mr. Thrasher. Mr. Molman. I can uncover my mute button. The um, Speaking of that kind of stuff, I know that's been expressed uh, of the several territories, including uh, Puerto Rico as well. Um, I don't know what it takes to get on there. If it's just as simple as getting a you know letter, like it sounds like it might be in Guam, um, maybe we could do all the territories that are inhabited. I mean, there just is an LNC call I had to do, I thought. I'll, I'll take care of that. Okay. Um, yeah, yes. I mean, uh, Madam Secretary, just uh, just uh, make that email about all territories, please. Yeah, no, I mean, no if, it, if it's if it's just as easy as sending them a certificate of nomination from the party, let's that's, do it. Yes, well, I, absolutely, and um, that's my understanding with Guam. With other places, I'm not sure off the top of my head. If if I may, Mr. Chair, I do have an answer for Guam. Please, um, Mr. Thrasher. All right, yes. So in uh, 2016, there was a letter sent from the campaign as well as a, a copy of a certificate of nomination uh, from the uh, from the National Party. I believe Mr. Johnson uh, it has the appropriate form, but it's, it's as simple as sending a letter. Um, Guam has in the past actually done, I guess, what it's called more of a straw poll than an actual election. Uh, but I do believe that that's what they're doing again this year is a straw poll, uh, and it would just take getting a letter. Time has expired on this item, unless anybody wishes to extend. I, but Mr. Chairman, I just want also want to thank Bob Johnson. It's not just signatures, it's paperwork. Bob Johnson does a great job, chairman of the Maryland Party, independent contractors and the LNC does a great job in terms of uh, working on the paperwork side of this uh, matter. Well, on behalf of the National Committee, thank you, Mr. Redpath, Mr. Thrasher, and everybody working very hard for our ballot access. Uh, 50 states is very important to us and uh, we appreciate all that you're doing and all the personal sacrifice you're doing. I know you're not doing it for the riches and the notoriety, so thank you. You're welcome and we're doing our best to be it through. So thanks everyone. I'm gonna sign off. Have a good meeting and a good time. Thank you. Thank you. Next item is report on potential conflicts of interest. Madam Secretary, is that your, do you lead that item? Um, I do, and it's in the one note, um, particularly the new members, if you could take a look to see if there's anything you need to add. For instance, let me go to it here. There's some that are empty and um, we libertarians tend to be very, very busy and 
it would be very surprising to me if we had zero. So um, Rich Bowen, I don't have yours. Mr. Fiera, I don't have yours. Um, and let's see, Mr. Nana, Mr. Routsep, Mr. Sexton. Those are the ones that I don't have anything down for. So just email me when you get a chance. Any questions for the secretary on that item? All right, seeing none. Next item is introductions. If you'll indulge me, I've added this. I think it's uh, important that we all get to know each other a little bit. So I've got a hat with everybody's names in it and we'll go through it. Um, if you could share your uh, your name so we can learn how to pronounce it correctly if we haven't learned that yet, uh, as well as uh, what state you're, you live in, what your job is. Cause I'm honestly, I talked about half of you this week and I'm actually learning what some of you do for a living. Um, and it's really interesting. Um, also what your favorite candy or snack is. And then something our membership people always like to know is how you join the party. Um, so we'd like to hear some of those stories. And uh, you know, if you could try to target a minute and a half for your answer, I know that's not a lot of time, but uh, uh, I think it'd be helpful to, uh, to help us get to know each other. So unless there's any volunteers, we can, uh, See who the name comes out of the hat here. Mr. Nana. I would be first. All yeah. right. <laughs> so you got my name right. My name is Mr. Nana, Dustin Nana. I live in the Buckeye State, the great state of Ohio. Um, I've been involved with the Libertarian Party since <clears throat> late 2015. Uh, I signed up for the newsletter here in the state when I was in high school back in 2012. Um, I went to my first convention in 2016, uh, got heavily involved after that, um, worked for the Johnson campaign. I'm currently the vice chair for the state of Ohio. Um, and in my personal, for my personal job, um, I work with people with developmental disabilities. I'm an in-home caretaker. So what I do is I go in and take care of the home for them, do the things that they may not be able to do or assist them and make sure they do the things that they're supposed to do. I pass their medication. Um, in non-corona times, I get them on the bus in the morning uh, to go to day program and or uh, welcome them home when they get back from day program. Uh, just stuff like that. Um, I don't think, oh, and my favorite snack. Um, I am very partial to Reese's Cups and um, Baby Ruth candy bars. Thank you. Uh, Senator Epke. Uh, well, Laura Ebke, you got the name right. Um, I'm in Nebraska. I um, have lived in Nebraska my whole life, except for five years when my husband was in the military and we were in um, Tennessee for three and North Carolina for two. So um, that's kind of the way that works. Um, I uh, joined the party uh, originally back in 2011 but maintained my um, registration um, in one of the old parties. Um, and then in 2016, got into a little bit of a battle with the governor and um, made the big switch. And in terms of um, favorite snacks, give me movie theater buttered popcorn any day. And then you wanna talk about your current job? Oh, yes, yes. I'm the senior fellow for job licensing at the Platt Institute, which is a free market think tank based in Nebraska. Thank you, Mr. Valente. Hey, everybody. Uh, Dave Valente. I am the uh, Region 5 alternate and chair of the Libertarian Party of West Virginia. I have been involved in the Libertarian Party since August 31st of 2012. At least that's what my card says. Um, I, so, um, my real life job is that I am the, the real life Ron Swanson. I work for the federal government with the Department of Veterans Affairs as a business analyst. Uh, I've been working in DC for the last, uh, six, seven years now, um, and, uh, live in the Eastern Panhandle of West Virginia. My favorite snack, well, I mean, if you look at me, I, I, I don't turn down many snacks, but, um, 
I'm going to have to go with Cheetos. Cheetos are my favorite snack, even though I hate their association with Donald, Donald Trump. That's, that's you know, here and over there. So that's me. Thank you. Mr. Vice Chair Mullman. Here we go. Uh, my name is Ken Mullman. I live in Kentucky. I uh, lived in Kentucky near Cincinnati my entire life. Uh, I am an IT professional by trade. Uh, I specialize in storage and backup and hyper, hyper converged infrastructure, which is fancy terms that only IT people understand. Um, I joined the party officially. I started paying dues in 1999, um, but wasn't active until 2006 in the wake of the uh, Kilo decision and the solicitation of candidates by the Libertarian Party of Kentucky looking for congressional candidates. Uh, my favorite candy is M&Ms, but I am on a diet plan. And uh, those that are uh, willing to do the same, I challenge everyone to get in better shape. I should, oh, I should note that I've been a lifetime member since uh, 2018. And for those that may be watching us, uh, if they wish to become a life member, they can do so by going to lp.org slash donate and donating either $1,500 in a lump sum or setting up a monthly plan to get to $1,500 in one calendar year. Mr. Coburn. So it's a rolling 12 months, is it not? Oh. Uh, yes, I'm sorry, within one year. Very true. Mr. Coburn. Yep, so I'm Tucker Coburn. I'm the Region 8 rep, and I'm also the first vice chair of the New York party. Um, so I'm from New York. Um, right now for my job, I do political consulting for candidates in the party. Um, I'm campaign manager for Thomas Queter, who's running for state senate in New York. I'm working on Dwayne Whitmer's campaign in New York as well, Kevin Kahn's campaign in Ohio. I uh, just did some work for John Stewart in Ohio as well. Um, so I bounce around on that, I'm always working to try to advance liberty. And my favorite snack, um, I'm not a huge snacker, but uh, I would have to go with white chocolate uh, macadamia nut cookies are like a real uh, issue for me. Um, and I joined the party. So I did, I volunteered for Gary Johnson's campaign in 2016. And before that I uh, created a libertarian, par or libertarian chapter at my college. Um, but I don't believe I actually joined the party until 2017 after the 2016 election. Thank you. Me. Uh, all right. So I live in the District of Columbia. I was born and raised in California, where I joined the party after coming across a table at the county fair in the San Diego County Fair when I was a teenager. Um, and, uh, you know, really dived into it after that. Um, and then my favorite snack is goldfish, the, uh, the cheese crackers. I'm glad you clarified. <laughs> yeah, no, no eating live goldfish. Yeah, I was really concerned as well. Mr. Ferreira. Yeah, I guess I'll turn on my video for this. <laughs> hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Tim or TJ Ferreira. I'm uh, in California, Los Angeles or Pasadena for those who want to be more specific. I was born in California and raised both in California and Nevada. Um, I do a lot of stuff. The computer programmer part is the easiest to describe, so I'll just say I'm a computer programmer. Um, uh, let's see, candy or snack. I like a uh, heat bar and ice cream combined together, which is why I have this nice cool figure that you see in front of you. Uh, I was registered to vote libertarian since I was 18. I've uh, been a lifetime member of the party, both the national party and the state party for a number of years now. And in 2018, I ran for Lieutenant Governor here in California on the Libertarian Party ticket and got just shy of 100,000 votes, which was like 33 times better than I thought I was going to get. So I'm pretty proud with that result. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Phillips. Hi, I'm John Phillips. I'm the Region 6 rep. Uh, let's start with the easy one. My favorite snack is anything chocolate. I work, uh, I currently own my own business. This is the fourth, fifth of my own businesses I've owned and currently it is an auto, auto repair facility. I both joined the LP officially, um, well, and it stuck in 2016 during the Gary Johnson campaign. I'd uh, belong to 
you know, little smaller parties all the way back into the 90s. Um, learned about the party with Ron Paul in the 80s when I was still in high school or still in a school and drawing political cartoons for school. Um, really got serious about it with Harry Brown and then uh, got even more serious about it with uh, Gary Johnson in 2012. And then I actually uh, left Illinois to, uh, before I started and got really serious and started my own chapter here in Illinois, I uh, started with Gary Johnson's campaign petitioning in Ohio. So that's how I met Dustin. So there's my story of joining the party. Mr. Longstreth. Uh, okay. Uh, well, my name is Richard Longstreth. Uh, I currently live in Arizona, but I am in transition. I will be living in uh, Illinois uh, October-ish, maybe September, uh, depending on when everything closes and all that good stuff. Uh, my job uh, is with uh, Lowe's, the uh, hardware store, uh, but I work for corporate as a physical inventory field support specialist. Uh, basically, that is a fancy job title for somebody who runs around and conducts inventories at the stores and uh, then uh, uh, examines the details and uh, reports shrink. So uh, that is my job. Uh, my favorite uh, snack, I would say I really, really like dark chocolate, but a close second, which is a little strange, is uh, chicken. I really, really like chicken a lot. Uh, let's see, I joined, uh, so I was casually involved uh, dating back to 2008 uh, when I was in uh, college. Um, after about three years of being in college, I was looking for something different and I uh, got casually involved with a local group there uh, in Tennessee. Uh, then moved out to Colorado where they had a uh, voter registration for a uh, Libertarian Party. So registered as a Libertarian uh, and reached out to the state party. Lily Tang Williams got a hold of me and uh, from there uh, was, was involved in a lot of state leadership positions. And uh, yeah, the rest is history. Thank you. Ms. Bilyeu. <clears throat> yeah, so apologies for not having the camera on. I am recovering from severe illness and still retreating. So you guys will get to see me next time. Um, I am in Texas. I've been in Texas my whole life. Um, I am not really, oh, my, my job is uh, I'm a realtor. I've been a realtor for three years after a 20 year uh, career in education. But I recently accepted a position as vice president of sales for Texas CEO magazine. So um, that's a new project that I'm working on. <clears throat> um, I joined the party in 2012 after being politically aware, but also politically homeless my entire life. And in 2012, Heather Fazio, a name some of you may know, uh, was working for LP Texas at the time. And she created a Facebook app recruiting candidates in 2012. And I clicked on that and the rest is history. Um, I was doing some volunteer work for Lauren Doherty in 2013, who at, the at that time was also employed by LP Texas, and she gave me the membership list or the list of people who in the last 10 years had requested information, and interestingly, my name was on that list from 2005, which indicated to me that in 2005, I had reached out to the Libertarian Party and no one called me, and for six more years, seven more years, I remained politically homeless until Heather Fazio did something about it. So anyway, here I am and I love it. And um, uh, Paul just pointed out my husband that I may be one of the senior members on the LNC <laughs> right now, aside from Tim. But anyway, I'm happy to be here again. I'm really excited to work with you guys and uh, let's, let's see what we can do here. Thank you. I'm so glad you're feeling better and Thank convention you. wasn't the same without you. Um, Thank you, I'm, I was very sad. Did you say your favorite candy or snack? Oh, I apologize. No, um, I'm really not into sweets, but I do love Funyuns. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Hagen. Thanks, yeah, Tim Hagen. Um, live in Nevada, Las Vegas area. Uh, originally from Kansas City, Missouri. And job, uh, beginning of last year, I decided I'd worked long enough, so I decided to retire. I uh, was an electrical engineer and it was, oh, the, I became a libertarian, heard about the libertarian party from my brother and he told me about, said, yeah, I want less government control in all areas. So it seemed to fit me. So I was back in mind and a few years later, uh, worked a temporary job and 
when it was over, a satellite got launched, my job was over. I decided to go to grad school, uh, went to Georgia Tech, get my master's in the first week. They have different organizations set up tables, saw the college libertarians. So I stopped by, talked to them, started joining them with the meetings then. And as far as snacks, um, I read where dark chocolate has some things that are supposed to be good for your health. So I've been eating the Hershey's dark chocolate kisses and consider that health food. <laughs> Just keep telling yourself that, Tim. <laughs> I have Mr. Hewitt. He had the drop off, but he did text me that he likes payday candy bars. So. Mr. Nikayla. Hello, everybody. My name is Stephen Nikayla, and I'm Region 2 representative on the LNC. Um, my favorite snack is blue, blue corn chips and hummus. I, I typically don't eat uh, too much sugar and junk food, but I really love blue corn chips. Um, for work, I am the director of operations for my family's Wendy's franchise. We have eight stores over two states. We have three um, in the Florida Keys, two in Key West, one a marathon, and four in, actually going on, we just went on five in North Carolina. So I do a lot of traveling between the two states. I also recently became a franchisee for Dairy Queen down in Tavernier in my hometown after Hurricane Irma uh, knocked down the store, we took it over and we, we made it a DQ again. So we have to keep our hometown DQ. Um, when I'm there and I do divulge myself into some sugar, I usually go for the chocolate brownie extreme. So that's my favorite. Uh, <laughs> we're still working on getting the, uh, one of our other restaurants back up that I'll be involved in the Island Grill. And hopefully we can take some of you guys out in the boat and do some uh, fishing trips with our, with our donors and LNC members. Um, how I came to the party, I was an idealist in high school. I wanted to change the world. And when I discovered the Libertarian Party uh, in 2012 at Paul Fest, when I met Gary Johnson, it seemed like the perfect fit for me. So I changed my voter registration uh, to uh, Libertarian. I never ended up voting for a Republican, but if I did, it would have been Ron Paul. Uh, I didn't tarnish my record, though. I voted for a Libertarian through and through, and, uh, and I'm happy and proud to uh, be on the committee today. I did some stuff with the Americans for Liberty at FIU for several years, got involved with my state affiliate. I'm currently the Florida State Chair, and I'm happy to be serving on this committee with you all. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Sexton. How's it going? Uh, David Sexton from Tennessee. I am the current vice chairman for the state of Tennessee. Um, I found out I was a libertarian in 2003, but did not actually join the party until 2016 when my military service and contracting was over and I joined to help out the Gary Johnson campaign. Um, favorite snack is peanut M&Ms, though I'm not really allowed to have them anymore because of a medical condition, but I still sneak them when my wife's not looking. Um, and I believe that was it, right? Did I answer all, did I hit all the check marks? I think so. All right. Mr. Buffman. Hi guys, uh, Matt Buffman, Wisconsin. Uh, I got involved in the party. Oops. Sorry, I got involved in the party back in 2014 because uh, I wanted to start running for office. Um, met a lot of awesome people here in Wisconsin um, and just really loved it and started kind of working my way up the ranks through the state party. Um, my job, I'm actually a police detective for the city of Milwaukee and I investigate sexual assaults, crimes against children um, and missing persons. And to piggyback off that, my favorite uh, snack is bacon. <laughs> Mr. Lucini. Mr. Lucini, you're muted. Well, apparently the space bar trick doesn't work. Um, anyway, I joined the party, or sorry, I registered as Libertarian in 1982, um, became a Libertarian uh, with the party, I believe in 88, but then let it lapse until um, I think 98. I uh, have never voted for a non-libertarian for president. Um, I run a uh, rapidly growing software business. I also have an oil and gas operation in Texas, as well as a thermal alternative energy company. 
and do other things on the side. Uh, favorite snack? Um, hard pressed to choose between bacon and any kind of jerky made from game meat. Mr. Hall. Uh, hello, my name is Jared Hall. I am living in Indiana, originally from Nebraska. Uh, I don't really have a favorite snack. If I did, I'd probably go with Chet Smix or any kind of peanut. Uh, my, my job, my day job is I'm a machinist for an international medical device manufacturer. And I joined the party officially in 2016 when I was asked uh, to go get interviewed by uh, Miss Epke <laughs> to help with the Gary Johnson campaign. Uh, before then, I had considered myself a libertarian since 2010. So that's pretty much me. Thank you. Ms. Adams. Yeah, um, I'm Aaron Adams. I'm the Region 7 alternate um, again. Um, I'm sure some people aren't as thrilled with that as I am, but I'm happy to be here um, and to be back. Favorite snack? I, Food and I have a really weird relationship, so I don't really snack a whole lot. Um, probably be a really good tiramisu. I have a weakness for amazing desserts and rich chocolatey things. Um, so I kind of came to the party in the most unusual way, I'm told. Um, I did not come from either the left or the right or either of the old parties. I came to the party from punk rock music and punk rock culture um, and was one of those people that showed up at conventions and crashed party meetings but refused to get involved because politics were icky and I just wasn't going to do that um, until I woke up and realized that like it or not politics affects every aspect of my life and I don't like being controlled unless it's by choice and it certainly wasn't so it was kind of time to push back I started reaching out to um, the Oklahoma party shortly after I moved here in 96 from Michigan uh, and did not receive any contact from anyone uh, regardless of repeated attempts to contact them until 2015. Um, so many, many, many years sitting and just going, screw it, I'll just do my own thing. And I did. Um, in 2015, I joined the party. Uh, last year, became a lifetime member. Uh, for work, I'm a licensed CNA specializing in geriatric care. And I'm also an end of life doula. Um, the right to death with dignity is a really big issue for me. And that's why I changed careers after 30 years in hospitality. Thank you. Mr. Bowen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm Rich Bowen. I am the Region 8 uh, alternate Northeast region. I am from the great socialist state of New Jersey. Uh, I am from South Jersey, which makes me a Philadelphia sports fan, not a New York sports fan. That's very important. Uh, my occupation is I am a sole proprietor CPA specializing in partnership tax. And I am actually trying to or expecting to retire sometime next year, sometime in 2021. Uh, I was a, really became a serious libertarian in 2008 during uh, Dr. Ruart's campaign. Uh, unfortunately, the party nominated someone else. So I didn't actually join the party until 2011 and uh, joined the Gary Johnson campaign. Um, as many of you know, I'm good with numbers, not so good with words, better with numbers, definitely. Uh, somehow by state statute, I think I have to be the treasurer for every libertarian uh, candidacy in New Jersey, uh, which is fine with me. I am the past treasurer of New Jersey also. Uh, you'll always be able to recognize me at any meeting or public event because my favorite snack is Mountain Dew Code Red. I am almost always carrying a bottle of this with me. Uh, it's nice to meet everybody. It's nice to be with everybody. And I look forward to the next two years. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Smith. Hey guys, how's it going? Sorry about that. I had to unmute. Uh, hello, Joshua Smith, one of five wonderful at-large reps on the LNC. pregnant girlfriend we're due january 4th so uh looks like the midwest and the land of ranch dressing will now be my home uh my favorite snack is probably 
strawberry ice cream. I, I don't eat a lot of sweets, but when I do, that's my go-to. Uh, I prefer a steak though. Um, how did I come to the party? Well, I was uh, uh, in the military during Operation Iraqi Freedom. And uh, when I got out and when I got home, I was staunchly anti-war activists and parties um, really respected my values anymore. And so um, I found the Libertarian Party in 2010, was loosely aligned and then um, became the uh, uh, region rep for the Washington State Party during the Gary Johnson campaign and started working on the campaign there and then running for chair, obviously, several times unsuccessfully. But we have a wonderful chair and uh, I think it's going to be a good term. So thank you, guys. Did you say January 4th is when uh, your girlfriends do? That's the current due date. Yeah, I mean, you never know if it's actually going to be correct. But yeah, she's about 16 weeks pregnant currently. So, Well, congratulations on that. And January 4th is an excellent birthday. Oh, is that your birthday? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I was was hoping for... uh, christmas day because my grandfather's birthday was on christmas day uh, he passed away a couple years ago so and uh if it's a boy we're not going to find out the the sex until after it's born but if it's a boy we're going to name it mateo floyd and floyd was my grandfather's first name so pretty excited excellent thank you Ms. hogarth Ms. hogarth sorry my bad um, I'm serving as the Region 5 representative. Uh, I've lived in North Carolina since 1995, where I've been active with the LP here for the last two decades, although I was technically brought into the party during Ron Paul's 88 run, as so many people were. Um, I work for Stem Cell Bank, uh, associated with Duke University. And I am a big fan of black licorice, thereby alienating me from 50% of the population who are savages and don't like it. More for you, right? Right. Ms. Sarwark. Hi, I'm, um, I'm having a little bit of internet issues right now, but I'm Valerie Sarwark and I and my day job is um, I'm a recruiter for an educational hiring firm that's based out of Phoenix, and we find quality teachers all over the United States to work for uh, high-performing charter schools in the Phoenix area. I also do social media, um, and I do that part-time because uh, my full-time job is obviously taking care of five million children. Um, Oh, I live in New Hampshire. I'm actually from Virginia, um, pretty close to DC area, and Oh, how I became a libertarian. Um, so I, I told this story like a million times about how my mom was actually an undercover libertarian uh, and kind of just said, you know, basically laws don't belong on bodies. And I didn't realize that she was actually a libertarian until, uh, you know, probably I was 35 years old. Um, but I changed my voter registration in 2009 after uh, I was let down by Obama uh, for not, not closing Guantanamo Bay. And I officially joined the party, I think in 2014, it might've been 2015. And my favorite snack, um, probably, I don't, I'm not a big snacker, but I love cheese. I don't think there's a cheese that I would say no to. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Harlos. Oh, okay, well, it's busy doing the minutes. You caught me off guard, which you shouldn't have, but you did. Uh, and now I gotta look at the questions again. Oh, so my name, uh, here I am looking at your little agenda. Okay, name, Karen Ann Harlow, state, Colorado. Um, and Colorado is completely wasted on me because I don't smoke pot. And my job is I've been a paralegal for well over two decades, which means I have a lot of experience handling attorneys, so be careful, Mr. Chair. Um, <laughs> also, okay, favorite candy, pink starburst. I definitely can be bought with pink starburst. And uh, how I joined the party, through a Facebook debate um, where I was trying to get out of a debate. So I just pulled a word out of my rear end, which was libertarian, realized I didn't know what it meant. And the last time I used a word, I didn't know what it meant. It turned out to be profoundly obscene. So. I went and looked it up. So looked up the website, read the um, platform, 
and the next browser tab I opened was uh, my voter registration change. And I did it within 15 minutes. I was a non-voter prior to that. So my poor husband, we met online. He comes home lunch break. He had this nice conservative Republican, well, a name only Christian girl. And I'm like, I changed my voter registration. He's like, to what? You don't even vote. But there you go. Um, and uh, that was registration. But getting involved with the National Party, it was that black T-shirt. I never planned on doing anything. But on Facebook, I saw the ad for that T-shirt. And I'm like, damn, that's a sweet shirt, man. I wanted it. And Wes Benedict called me. And it was all over. So I blame the shirt. Thank you. Did I skip anyone? Excellent. Well, thank you all for indulging. Actually, I haven't gone. Sorry, it took, oh. took a second. I'm sorry, Mr. Routsup. No, Go. you're fine. Yeah. Uh, so my name is Eric Routsup. I'm from North Carolina. Uh, I own a home inspection business. We are a multi-inspector uh, business servicing the triangle and the central sections of North Carolina. <clears throat> my favorite candy or snack uh, has to be anything pistachio. Uh, and uh, also, Mr. Nikella, my favorite beverage is the Orange Julius Original. So seeing that you now own Dairy Queens, uh, you may find me in one of your locations. Um, how did I join the party? It was after the 2000 election. Uh, I became very disassociated with the old party that I was with. Uh, rapidly found the Libertarian Party in Suffolk County, New York, and was a, a distant member as I was slowly wading into the waters. Uh, in 2007, on my first day in North Carolina, and hope she doesn't mind me calling her out, but Susan Hogarth and uh, Barbara Howe uh, greeted me at the State Fair on my first full day in North Carolina and uh, got me involved ever ever more and more and more. Uh, and here we are today. Thank you. Anyone else accidentally skipped? All right, thank you all. Uh, next item on, item on the agenda is officer reports. And the first one is mine. And I'll just be very brief. Um, uh, much of my last week was uh, helping Ms. Harlos with getting the at-large and judicial committee results uh, released um, and then communicating with the various members of the ballot access committee to understand where we need to um, send resources and, and kind of what the lay of the land is on that, which you, you've all now gotten on this meeting as well. Um, my next week, uh, I'll be doing a lot of uh, deep dives with our staff and our contractors uh, to kind of understand where we're at on, on all that stuff, as well as putting together this meeting. So um, that's kind of what I have right now. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Seeing none, we'll go to Mr. Molman for vice chair's report. One second, sir. I just wanted to know how Ethan was handling the tradition tra transition. Uh, he is listening. He's not listening here. He's, uh, I think, getting his steps in while watching us on YouTube. So uh, uh, he's having a ball. Uh, yeah, no, he, he's excited. Uh, he's got lots of ideas, uh, some of which I, I may actually take up. So we'll see. <laughs> he sends his best. Uh, Mr. Mullen. All right. Um, well, since the week has passed, uh, I've been uh, transitioning actually mostly uh, the Joe campaign responsibilities that the scope creep caused me to take on more than I had volunteered for, because this is a libertarian organization. and That's how that goes. Um, and so I, I did activate a uh, previous volunteer to get that transitioned and uh, just did a massive cutover for them to uh, G Suite, which speaking of, uh, Mr. Fishman is on this call, and, and uh, I don't know if this is the appropriate time, but we are preparing to cut the LP over as well, um, and I think that'll be beneficial to everyone here. Uh, the other thing I've been trying to catch up on is ballot access. Uh, I was on the committee in 2016. It is a passion of mine to make sure that we have access, um, and so I've, I've spent a bit of time just calling around, getting caught up. I didn't bother Bill because I know he's been also petitioning his own stuff, and so um, I, I've seen the calls for people to go into Pennsylvania. Uh, I know a few people in and around Ohio uh, that are great petitioners and seeing if they're available to swing in over there and help. Um, 
that's mostly been what I've been focused on is kind of transitioning out of the other things I was doing and into this role. Um, and yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. And, you know, it's only been a week, so there's lots to do, but uh, yeah, that's where it is. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Molman? Seeing none, we'll go to the treasurer's report, Mr. Hagan. Um, don't really have anything new since the last meeting. We should be having the June end of month finance reports coming out fairly soon. And I'll email those out and explain the important things to uh, usually look at on those. And didn't really have much else since, since then. Any questions for Mr. Hagan? I want to know how it feels to be the only unanimously elected person in the LP. I'm surprised because I mean, usually you always have a few people that will always vote for Noda. <laughs> it's just they always have to do that. So I was surprised and <laughs> appreciate uh, getting uh, getting unanimous. Well, I don't think we were surprised, Tim. <laughs> Thank you for keeping us all out of jail, Tim. I think well, I'm mostly trying to keep myself out of jail because the treasurer one <laughs> is a person right. gets named in any FBC actions. Exactly. Exactly. Point of information, Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Bowen. Yeah, treasurer elections are almost always unanimous with only one person running in my experience. Well, it certainly was this time. Thank you, Mr. Hagan. Uh, Secretary's report, Ms. Harlos. I've not terribly much to add since we just spoke a week and a half ago, a week ago, but um, I'm finishing up I, the, all the minutes for the first sitting because uh, those are due 60 days and that's coming up in a couple days. So you'll have those as well as um, the, there was a couple of LNC minutes that I'm finishing up then the, also the big convention. So I am minutes for all of the minutes of all of the days until those are done. And then they'll be working with Mr. Fishman on the G Suite migration to start setting up our a better document retention system, which I've been complaining about forever. So I'm really looking forward to that. And once I get the first sitting of convention minutes done, because I'm coming up on the deadline for that, I am meeting with Evan to um, get him involved in uh, the unofficial assistant secretary role got a lot of things that we can work on, but I do have to meet my bylaws deadline for those minutes first. Any questions for Ms. Harlow? All right, yeah, me again. Um, Ms. Harlow, have you talked to, I, I missed it, I'm sorry, I had a phone call come in real quick, but uh, did you, have you talked to uh, Evan about the assistant secretary thing yet? Yeah, um, that was the last part of what I had said. Um, I spoke with him briefly to let him know that I will be getting with him soon. Um, I'm coming up on a bylaws mandated deadline for the minutes for the first sitting. So that will occupy every bit of my attention until that draft is submitted. Then I'm planning on meeting with um, Evan on some projects and to hear what ideas he has. So I have touched base with him, but we haven't had our con uh, comprehensive meeting yet. Okay, thank you. I just missed that because my phone rang. No problem. Any further questions for Ms. Harlos? Seeing none, I believe that concludes officer reports. The next item is staff reports and Mr. Fishman asked for some time to talk about the G Suite transition, which has already been mentioned a couple of times. Mr. Fishman. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, for all the new members, we are going to be transitioning to G Suite for mail, for documents. Uh, it can give you your own personal meeting rooms that you can use. Uh, and I anticipate it being a much better system uh, because it's all encompassing. Also, you have a calendar. We'll have a shared uh, LP calendar. So now uh, when the secretary wishes to schedule a meeting, it will go on all of your calendars automatically as well as going up on the website. So all sorts of wins out of that. As soon as this meeting is over, Mr. Molman and I are going to deactivate your LP email that you normally log into. I would then like you to email me from some other email account. So email me 
dan.fishman at lp.org or easier to remember xd at lp.org either one lphq uh well that one also works uh dan.fishman at lphq is also that's that's the fastest one to get to me but any one of those the easy one to remember is xd at lp.org um x as an executive director i know previous directors went by ed but gentlemen of my age are uncomfortable with that initial so uh i so xd at lp.org um all that being said uh send me your from your email and i will send you your new login and password instructions on how to get into g suite ken and i will be making the transition as soon as this is over and then we'll be walking through the support uh, over the week uh, i have also enlisted the secretary to help me with uh actually not to help me with she will be the author of the new data architecture behind the scenes where we will have a structured shared drive system where we'll have archived information. Uh, she'll set up the folder system for what goes where. We'll have uh, complete history on documents in the future as well as versioning. So uh, I'm very grateful to the secretary for setting that up because as she's mentioned, it's something that she's been asking for a while and I think will improve our institutional knowledge. Um, other than that, uh, the other things that I've been focusing on is uh, coordinating a little bit with uh, the the presidential campaign in terms of the crossover of some of the stuff that's happening with us. Uh, they want to, most of their merchandise, they want to sell through the LP store uh, and which is nice because we'll actually make the profit from it and we'll contain their merchandise. We are transitioning to drop shipping um, uh, and our partner uh, master print is taking over almost everything. We will still do a few things in house. But overall, it's a better uh, plan for us. And we've been spending a lot of unnecessary hours on packaging. Uh, and then I want to just briefly drop something in your mind space to think about over the next six months. Uh, in the bylaws, uh, it is mandated that sustaining membership is $25 a year. However, uh, I would like to have you think about and then give me advice as to whether or not in January of 2021, we should make a basic membership of $50 a year uh, and stop accepting $25 donations online. If somebody wants to become a $25 donor, they can still send us a check and be a sustaining member. I put that into your thought space to think about it and welcome your advice. That's the last thing I got. Thank you. I'm sure that won't be controversial. Thank you. Mr. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, do you want my vote on that now? Because I'll give it to you. It's no. All right. Questions for Mr. Fishman. Uh, just raise your hand and I'll call on you. Uh, Mr. Longstreth. Uh, yes, Mr. Fishman. Uh, thank you for all of the work that you did uh, over the weekend at convention. I know that was uh, largely unexpected and, and I appreciate you jumping in there and doing what needed to be done, uh, as well as any staff volunteers that are listening that were involved or, or volunteers otherwise. Um, that was a monumental task and, and uh, your assistance was greatly appreciated. I do have a request though. Um, could you please uh, send out um, the stand-up information once the new email addresses are activated to everybody uh, that is newly on the LNC. That way they can begin attending uh, those stand-ups as well. It's like I paid you to say that. Could you do me a favor and describe to the LNC what stand-up is and how you've been participating in it so much, uh, Ms. Harless, as well? Sure. Uh, so what the stand-up is, folks, is uh, the staff has uh, uh, daily meetings, uh, uh, sometimes, uh, depending on which department, multiple times a day uh, to talk about what's going on uh, on staff and that sort of thing specifically. Uh, we get a lot of information from the reports, but there's a lot of other stuff that happens. Uh, that it, And um, I would I, I try to uh, attend at least uh, twice a week. Um, there's also a stand-up for uh, the Frontier Project, uh, if that is something you're interested in, uh, as well as uh, there's all sorts of just organized events uh, that I would encourage everybody to try and get involved with if possible, such as the new member hangouts uh, and that sort of thing. So um, uh, what I'm requesting is that Dan send us all that information. That way, if we have some free time, uh, we can participate in that area, uh, as well as I know our uh, uh, development department would certainly love to schedule some call time uh, with anybody that is interested in uh, making phone calls on behalf of the party to uh, whether it be new dem uh, new members or, or uh, to try and uh, uh, get some donations or what have you, uh, they would certainly be interested. Uh, just reach out to, uh, I think Becca's handling uh, some of that scheduling. Uh, yeah. But if you want to reach out, then uh, that would be uh, possibly somebody you could reach out to or Tara. Yeah, and that's an exceptional point. Our standups at 11 o'clock Eastern is external affairs. So that includes fundraising, 
and pretty much everything that's forward facing. And at 4 p.m. is operations. So uh, technical side of things, um, the nuts and bolts of the mechanics of the party happens at four o'clock. Uh, and I just want to thank uh, Richard and Karen Ann and uh, Tim Hagen, Joe Bishop Henchman, uh, anybody else I'm forgetting who attended a stand up over the last year. I really appreciate you guys being there and it means a lot to the staff when you're there as well. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Longstreth. I have Mr. Phillips and Mr. Roudsep and Ms. Adams, Mr. Phillips. I'm sorry, Dan, I hate to keep beating a, a horse on this, but I asked you in the meeting before the convention about the cost of this G suite migration. And while you're doing a great job on selling us of the benefits on it, I'm a little concerned about the fact that we have a $2,000 budget item, if you figure out the math over the course of a year, that we have not allocated funds for in the budget. It and actually it is revenue neutral uh, because it'll replace Zoom. So we're actually spending a lot more than $2,000 a year on Zoom. So it will save us money in the long run. That's the question you didn't answer for me before. Thank you, I appreciate that. I apologize. Thank you, Mr. Phillips. Uh, Mr. Roudsep and Ms. Adams. Mr. Roudsep. Yes, uh, Dan, one quick question. Uh, the calendar feature in G Suite, will that be auto-populating into the website as well? We will set up one specific, so you can have a whole bunch of different calendars and people have different access to it. And yeah, we'll have one calendar that will be the public calendar. Uh, and then you guys as members of the LP will have access to put anything on it. If we wanted to, we could say only the secretary had access to it. Uh, I'll let you guys tell me how you want to control it. But uh, yes, then that'll be a page on our website as opposed to right now to get an event on the calendar is, uh, is a frustrating process, even for me. Uh, and so making it easier, I think, is a better thing. And will these stand-up meetings also show on our uh, G Suite calendar? Uh, I, I can put them in there for sure. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. I have Ms. Adams. Yes, I have two things. Um, one, with the stand-ups, are those recorded or transcribed in any way when any of us work during the day when those are happening? And I would certainly like to at least be caught up to speed on what went down um, while I'm at work. Um, so that would be that would be the first one. The other one, as far as um, the G Suite's replacing Zoom, um, I just want to point out that we need to adjust our policy manual if we're going to do that, because per our policy manual, our electronic meetings can only take place in one of two ways, one of which is Zoom. G Suite is not the other way. So we need to adjust that policy if that's what we're going to do. Otherwise, when we meet, we will be in violation of our own policies. Uh, we don't take minutes of stand-up. Uh, it's generally, all we do in stand-up, it's, uh, it's based on, for those of you who are familiar with Agile, Agile methodology, we say what we did yesterday, why we did or did not achieve our goals, what we're going to do today. Is there any way uh, those can be recorded? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I have uh, Mr. Molman and then Mr. Longstreth for a second round. Mr. Molman. Ms. Adams, I believe, brought up the policy manual. Um, that's something I'd like to look at a lot in this term. We do not need to have specific technologies outlined in the policy manual. We just need to have the specs. Whatever does the job, does the job. I mean, there's no reason to hard, if Zoom were to close tomorrow for whatever reason, would we just not be able to meet again? I mean, that's, we, we need to use the, use more generic terms to tell what we need to do rather than specifying. But, and that's relevant to the G Suite conversion and all that. We, we thankfully don't say what mail system we have to use in our policy manual. Um, and, and likewise, we shouldn't outline specific technology things um, because tech changes all the time. That's just my thought on that. Thank you, Mr. Molman. I have Mr. Longstreth and Mr. Phillips and Mr. Valente. Mr. Longstreth. Uh, that was a mistake. My hand has been lowered. Okay. Mr. Phillips, then Mr. Valente. Uh, Mr. Fishman, just a question that I saw pop up in the chat from a member. Um, if we switch to the G Suite and these type of meetings happen over G Suite, um, how will um, our members be able to view these meetings like they can now? Uh, same way. So actually, it's significantly cheaper uh, and we can have more people in. The generic G Suite meet Google Meet will have a uh, 250 person capacity as opposed to the 100 person that we have right now. 
Uh, plus, it automatically streams to YouTube. If you, there's a button you can check that says stream your meetings to YouTube. Thank you, uh, Mr. Valente. Hey, uh, Dan. Um, uh, just one, I, I would like to agree with Ken. You need to have our policy manual de definitely does need to be system agnostic that, you know, we don't call out specific, specific systems. We, we find ourselves in this situation. Um, also, there was another question in the, uh, uh, in the chat. Uh, will we be con continue to be doing the Friday happy hours? Uh, we will continue to do the Friday happy hours and we will also move those over to Google Meet and we'll have larger capacity. Awesome. Thank you. I'll just make two notes. One, um, the policy manual is up to us, not up to Dan. Uh, he lives by it. We write it. So uh, certainly come forward with any ideas that you may want to do on that. And then um, on the dues, those are set by bylaws. Uh, we can always you know, have higher levels of dues and offer more for people who do higher levels, but uh, that is set up. Uh, time has expired on this item unless anybody wishes to extend. Seeing none, thank you, Mr. Fishman. Pleasure. Uh, I do have council's report and regional reports on the agenda because the policy manual requires that I put them on the agenda, but uh, I didn't, uh, I don't think anybody, it, unless anybody's eager to uh, say something on either of those items, we can. Mr. Chair. Mr. Nana. Just one, nothing super important, but the Ohio convention is this coming weekend. And I know a lot of you are already going to be there. Just if anybody wants to come, you're more than welcome to come. It's this. This coming weekend, the 24th through the 26th. And the, it's the Columbus Marriott, the airport Marriott. <clears throat> Thank you. I will be there. Uh, Mr. Phillips. Just a note, uh, the uh, Jorgensen and Cohen uh, campaigns will be traveling Illinois this week. Uh, we'll, uh, Mr. Cohen is starting today. Um, and joining us for our petition turn in tomorrow in Springfield. And we've got several uh, media opportunities for him. Uh, so hopefully we'll get some press and get that going. And uh, Dr. Jorgensen will be here next Sunday for a meet and greet, hopefully get some media appearances out of that. So if anybody's in the area and wants to attend, let me know, I'll get you the schedule. And if you're not, um, and you just want to get the media, I'll be um, to making sure that as soon as I see it, we get it forwarded, as I'm sure the Jorgensen campaign will as well. Thank you. Mr. Ferrer? Just a quick question for Mr. Fishman. Uh, if we're switching to G Suite after this meeting, uh, what time do we plan on canceling the Zoom contract? Do we need to address Section 7C of the policy manual tonight, or can that be done later? I intend to maintain the Zoom contract until we are satisfied that G Meet, Google Meet has satisfied our uh, things. So until the LNC says, yes, we're good to go, I will not cancel the Zoom contract. Thank you, sir. All right, I think that concludes that item. Next item is new business and we have a number of items under that. The first of which is appointment of assistant treasurer, uh, Mr. Hagan. So we have an assistant treasurer, uh, apparently, in the bylaws. <laughs> um, correct. And the primary reason we have to have an assistant treasurer is because of um, federal laws and regulations. Um, one, one reason is we need treasurer or assistant treasurer to sign off on all the monthly FEC reports. So if the treasurer was not available, let's give someone else that can review the reports and sign them off. And also if we do not have a treasurer, then the committee cannot raise or spend any funds if there's vacancy in treasurer. Um, but we can if there's, if we have an assistant treasurer listed on the statement of organization. And so those are the two main reasons why we have to have assistant treasurer. And of course they also take on other work like help review the financial statements to help be going over the budget. Thank you, Mr. Hagan. And I believe uh, some people have already reached out to you to express interest. Um, yeah, did you want, 
don't know if we want to do a open do a nominations and election or I know Robert Pepton is a treasurer from Arizona. So he's very interested in um, being the assistant treasurer. Uh, well, it's ultimately up to the committee and I'm sure if, if you have a, a preference, uh, they'll weigh that heavily. Um, he'd be fine with me, don't have, really have any other preference. Okay. Well, in that case, I'll uh, entertain motions related to this. Uh, uh, do we have to nominate uh, Mr. Pepton or? That can be done as a motion. Because um, I, I would move to nominate him. I spoke to him about it months ago and he has been very interested for quite some time and has definitely has the skill level we need for that position. Mr. Phillips, if, if I may, I think I heard you say that you want to move that we appoint Mr. Pepton. Is that correct? All right. Well, I asked if we needed to do nominations because I didn't want to leave anybody out, but I would happily move to appoint him if we don't have other nominations. I will second that motion. All right. Mr. Phillips moved to nominate Mr. Longstreth, to nominate Mr. Pepiton of Arizona. Mr. Longstreth seconded. Mr. Mullman has his hand up. I'm going to recognize him to say what he wants to say, and then we'll We'll go through this motion, Mr. Molman. I think I, I think I already heard what I needed to hear. Tim, you're you're good with with Miss Pepton, right? Uh, correct. Heard okay. some good stuff about him. Uh, okay. Clarification, Mr. Chair. Yes, Miss Arliss. I believe the motion was to appoint, not to nominate. I, I want to make sure my minutes are correct. Um, mm -hmm. I believe that was the corrected corrected motion. Yes, appoint. All right, uh, Ms. Adams. Yeah, I would speak for Alan. Um, Mr. Pepitan is a, is a longtime, dedicated, hardworking activist. Um, I've never known um, of any scandal. I've never heard of any, any kind of creepiness, right? And if that's out there, typically I hear about it. I, I haven't. Um, Alan works really, really hard. He's dedicated. He's been around. Um, and he's done a really good job as treasurer in his home state. Um, I would support Alan. Thank you, Ms. Adams. Uh, without objection, Starchild from the gallery. Starchild. You're muted, Starchild. All right, we'll have to come back to you. Um, Mr. Chair, I believe because he's on a phone, he will have to be unmuted if he, uh, I don't remember the code yet. Oh, seems he seems to have figured it out. All right, start. I think I figured it out. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, forgot to hit <laughs> start six. Um, yeah, I was just like to point out, this is an appointed position. Uh, I, I, I think it would be fair to the membership to, to let people know that there's, there's this opening and opportunity to serve. I, I don't know of any other candidates who are interested, but there might well be candidates. Uh, uh, unless it's a super urgent pressing thing, you need somebody to fill the post immediately. I would. I would suggest maybe do this the next regular um, LNC meeting since you're doing them more frequently now. Uh, thank you, Starchild. Mr. Kilski, without objection, uh, Mr. Kilski from the gallery. Mr. Kilski. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to chime in and just uh, um, say some good words in favor of Mr. Pepitone. Uh Number one, he's a great guy. Number two, he's really good at that treasurer's role. He's done that both in, for the Arizona Libertarian Party and he's done that for the Maricopa County Libertarian Party. And uh, um, I, I think he, I, I think you would do well to have him on board and helping out and uh, filling that role so that the party can continue to comply with its uh, regulatory obligations. Thank you. Thank you. I have Mr. Hagan and Mr. Lucini. Uh, Mr. Hagan. I um, mean, yeah, I was reminded of one other thing. The we do have a, our next FEC report is due tomorrow. So this would really, as far as FEC go, um, is concerned, it would go in effect um, after that report is done and when we get the statement of organization updated with them. Thank you. Mr. Lucini. I do believe this is actually falls under the category of being urgent. I don't believe that we should wait three months. Um, there was discussion during um, the convention about this position. Um, and I think people 
that were interested would have known to to reach out. So I would say let's make the selection now. Thank you. I have Ms. Sexton next. Ms. Sexton, well, well, sorry, without objection from the gallery, Ms. Sexton. Go ahead. All right. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Yeah, cool beans. Okay. Uh, so yeah, when it comes to this position, I think it is imperative that we definitely fill it immediately because um, as it's been stated already, it was mentioned during the national convention that we did need to go ahead, that this position was going to be available. And actually at convention is where I first heard about Mr. Pepperton wanting this position. So I think that he is a great fit for it. I think he'll be wonderful. He's been not only the state treasurer, but he's also been his county affiliate treasurer there for a good long while. And I think he's going to do a great job at it. Thank you, uh, Mr. Nikayla. And then uh, time will be up. Oh, right. oh, not that yet. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. <laughs> uh, yes, I just wanted to say, at serving as a previous treasurer in Florida, that if we can find somebody who wants the job, let's take them before they change their mind. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it is not an easy position, and if. Uh, the gentleman would like to serve. I think it would be a boon to Mr. Hagen to begin the onboarding process for him now um, in the event that Mr. Hagen wants to move to Canada or um, any of the such. I think it's good for the LNC to have somebody there. So I, I, I support the decision to like somebody today. Thank you. Um, Ms. Bill, you, um, why don't we take you and then uh, time will I just out. wanted to call a question. Okay. Question has been called on the appointment of the assistant treasurer uh, is there any objection? Seeing no objection, Mr. Pepitons appointed assistant treasurer. Uh, Mr. Hagen, would you mind doing the honors of uh, letting him know the uh, uh, what we've done to him? So, <laughs> sure. I think he was on the call earlier. I don't know if he still is. All right. Oh, he is on the call. Excellent. Well, congratulations, Mr. Pepitas. Excellent. Uh, the next item I have is the proposed chair's advisory committees. This is something I distributed earlier today. Um, in 2019, about a year ago, as a mere at-large member, uh, I proposed the uh, restructuring of our uh, committees on the LNC uh, to create new ones focused on each of our priority areas and in some cases substituting for existing committees or in other cases expanding on existing committees. Um, the goal there is to reflect the best practices of most successful boards where you have focused uh, committees on each of the things that you're trying to focus on. It creates excuse me, specialization from each of the board members and institutional champions for each of the things that we should be doing. Um, my impression, which certainly may differ from other people's, is that uh, we lack, in, in past years on the LNC, we've lacked institutional champions for, certain, for some of our priorities and have kind of expected everybody to be generalists about everything. And uh, to the extent anybody became an institutional champion, it was on their own initiative rather than the structure of the LNC guiding them to do that. Um, there was strong interest in the idea a year ago, but not enough to get it over the finish line for a vote. Um, so consequently, what I'm proposing to uh, move forward is to establish these committees as chair's advisory committees um, to essentially assist me and advise me in working with our staff to formulate goals, monitor progress, uh, come up with metrics and assist in execution. Um, they would be otherwise identical to the structure that I proposed in that they're made up of uh, members of the LNC, including alternates, as well as uh, outside individuals, and the membership is approved by the LNC. Um, if this proof of concept turns out to be successful and the LNC would like to make the structure permanent as standing committees, I'd certainly be very happy about that. But, you know, I understand it's a potentially a big change and maybe one that we want to see work before we take that step. Um, the committees that I've proposed, uh, as I said, I distributed earlier today uh, are six, activism and membership, budget and operations, campaigns and elected officials, development, marketing and media, and policies and procedures. 
Um, so no action is required by the LNC on this, uh, but I certainly would welcome feedback or input uh, either here or in the future. And I see Ms. Bilyeu has her hand up. Ms. Bilyeu. Uh, Mr. Chair, I, I would just um, maybe Sorry, suggest that we table any decisions. You did just say that no decision has to be made today, but that was going to be my my move is to just postpone Hello? this as far as decisions go to our next meeting, because yeah, this is a lot to digest for those of us or for those of the group who just saw this today. Yes. Sure. Thank you. I have Mr. Routsep and Ms. Harlos and Mr. Molman. Mr. Routsep. I actually love these going uh, over them uh, throughout the course of the day. The only thing that I'm seeing that seems to be missing is uh, some sort of youth engagement or uh, youth development within the party. Uh, noted. Uh, Ms. Harless. Great, you got me with peach on my mouth. Um, okay. Um, I, um, this actually, um, the committee might not remember, it isn't the first time we've seen it. Um, Mr. Bishop Benjamin brought this up last term with a lot more um, detail too, uh, it, though it's changed a little bit, I think, since then. And I loved it then and I, and I love it now. Um, so I would like to know though, even though this was more of an introductory idea right now to introduce us to it, what would be the next step, Mr. Chair, in getting this going? Um, unless there's strong objection, the next step would be to solicit um, from anybody that wants to participate um, what your interest level is, kind of a ranked preference between the committees, and then uh, presenting them to the LNC for uh, approval. So maybe next meeting or? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yep. I have Mr. Molman, Ms. Adams, Mr. Phillips. Mr. Molman. Um, <clears throat> I think uh, what I'm hearing is that this is going to get tabled, but I was going to suggest that unless these conflict with existing standing committees, that we just create them as ad hocs and just do it and do the thing. You know, Roberts prevents us from creating a committee that conflicts with another committee, but as long as there's no conflict, I, I think it's a great idea. There's There's nothing wrong with um, giving people jobs that they like to do. Um, we did that introductory call on LPTV with myself and the new at-larges, and I loved everything everybody said. Um, I'd like to see us empower every person to do what they're passionate about and, you know, certainly uh, to create those champions because that's what they love to do. So I, I do support this in, in concept and in practice. And if we don't fill it tonight, um, you know, I'm good. I'm okay with that, but I do think this is a good idea. Thank you, Mr. Moldman. I have Ms. Adams and Mr. Phillips. Ms. Adams. So, yeah, like I love the idea when it was presented like last cycle. I still like the idea. I would like to see these descriptions more fully flushed out, right? So that people really know what they're signing on to. Um, and I'd like to see some sort of metrics in place or, you know, how are we going to gauge success of these committees before we ask people to commit, right? I'd like people to actually know what they're committing to. So I love the idea. I'd like to see us potentially populate them maybe at the next meeting, um, partially also because I do think we have some other committees that we really need to, to get populated quickly. And I'd like to put our initial focus there. I'm certainly not saying let's put this off too long because I think there's huge value in this. I think we need to do it and it's gonna make us better but let's do the thing that we need to do first. Let's take some time to better describe this idea and then let's make this happen. Um, hopefully, like Mr. Mullman has suggested as ad hocs, I don't see any reason to, um, to not do that. Thank you, Ms. Adams. Uh, I have Mr. Phillips, Mr. Lucini, Ms. Harlos again, Mr. Phillips. The, uh, um, a lot of what I was gonna say has already been covered. Um, the one thing I would like to see and you know, I didn't really have time to go over it today, so I do apologize. The uh, um, I love this idea. I want to make sure that we don't uh, create conflict and uh, and crossing of the streams um, between you know when we have uh, 
committees that would already, you know, might already, or maybe should already be doing some of these things and haven't in the past. So we might want to maybe look at some, some of that before we actually get too far down the road. Um, and as uh, to answer Mr. Radzip's question, um, don't we, uh, a youth engagement committee we passed at the, in, in, in New Orleans, and I think we're still required to do so, are we not? Uh, it's a discussion topic for later in this meeting. Okay. Uh, just to answer that question. I have Mr. Lucini and then Ms. Harlos again, and then some people in the gallery. Mr. Lucini. Yeah, so I, I don't see how an advisory committee would conflict with other committees. I do understand that you're probably going to have the same limited pool of people interested in each topic. Um, I would say let's just sort of kind of call the question on this, just let's approve it now or put it on a later agenda item. Uh, is that a motion or an observation? It is a call the question motion. Uh, there's no motion on the table. In which case, never mind. Let's okay. <laughs> I have uh, Ms. Harlos and then without objection, Mr. Requero from the gallery. Ms. Harlos? Yeah, Mr. Lucini started to say what I was going to say. If these are advisory committees, they can't conflict. Um, and what, the way I understand them, and the chair can correct me, um, and what I really uh, loved about them, and if you do correct me, doesn't mean I won't love it anymore. It just means my understanding might need to be tweaked is that is an, there are advisory committees to the chair. And these advisory committees could be advising the chair that the focus of some other committees that's actually empowered with a budget needs to change. What I really liked about this, and I'm, I'm trying to say this tactfully because I don't wanna be negative about anything that has happened before, but what I've already seen, and I'm so happy with the communications I've had with our chair is that to me to just see the words there that someone is going to be advising the chair just makes me really, really happy because I don't think that really happened last time. And um, already Mr. Bishop Henchman has made me feel supremely involved in a fellow officer. And I think these advisory committees will make everyone have that same feeling and will give the chair more information. I, I do think we need to move away from the, the strong, strong chair model into more of a collaborative model. And this is the way to do it. And I already am getting that sense from Mr. Bishop Henchman and I am, you know, tickled pink. That's why my hair, no, just joking. Um, I tried that with my doctor, it was funny then, but probably not now. Um, so that's where I think the, the way I see it and the kind of the vision I have for it is to keep the chair very informed so that he can make the right decisions and be very nimble. Thank you, Ms. Harlos. Um, without objection, Mr. Requero from the gallery. Mr. Thank Requero. you, Mr. Chair. I'll just be brief. Um, gosh, it's hard to follow what Karen Ann just said. That was incredible. 100% uh, agree with her and with and Ms. Adams and Mr. Molman. Um, I would say, you know, take some time and just double check that you're not crossing the streams. If it is advisory, then um, Mr. Chair, I'll reach out to you because I'm interested in a couple of these. And I hope I get a chance later to speak on membership support because one of these advisory committees could possibly replace membership support. That was kind of what I mentioned in my last, in my final report of the committee was uh, to bring it back in some form or fashion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Requero. I have Mr. Molman, Mr. Bowen, and Mr. Phillips. Mr. Molman. All right, I, I, I had an idea here. So let's dip our toe in the water. Um, there's been a lot of interest in looking over the policy manual. And to that extent, I would like to move to create the policy and review ad hoc committee to a term uh, for a term to expire at the next meeting of the LNC with the charge to focus on proposed policy manual amendments. Can you uh, get the wording of that to the secretary? I certainly can. Mr. Molman has moved to create the policies and, sorry, can you reread your motion? Yes, yes. Um, move to create a policies and re policies and procedure, wait, wait, I, I'm sorry. It was supposed to be policies and procedures ad hoc committee to a term um, for a term to expire 
at the next meeting of the LNC with a focus on proposing policy manual amendments. Mr. Chair, point of information? Yes, Ms. Adams. What is the application process? Mr. Molman? I think we get to decide that. We have uh, to create it and then we How do we get it. this additional point of information? How do we get this information out to the body at large today, right now, before we create this committee so that they can apply? Mr. Molman? Good question. Uh, wasn't something I was necessarily thinking about when making the motion. I was thinking that there's a lot of interest in it. Yeah. Um, I don't know how many members we want to have on it, but go ahead, Mr. Benjamin. This is your this is your baby. I don't want to, you know. Could we maybe, Mr. Millman, would you maybe be open to amending that to creating but not yet populating so that we could go ahead and create it and then work out these details later? So just to answer the question, we've got a pretty finely tuned system for accepting applications um, for the past committees that we did last term. Uh, Ms. Harlos runs it well. She sends updated PDFs of applications and so forth. So I wouldn't necessarily hold stuff up because we've proven that we're able to do it. Um, um, Ms. Harlos? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I jumped the gun. Sometimes I talk to myself. Is um, that a bit of answer to that question? I'm, oh, yeah. I mean, I agree with you there. Uh, uh, Mr. Molman, would it offend you if I were to move to table this to the next meeting and if I could tell you why? Um, this is something I had been speaking with, with the chair about quite a bit. And this is really going to, I think, be critical in like the infrastructure things I'd been working on with Mr. Um, with, with Mr. Fishman. And I actually think like this particular committee needs to be potentially headed by the secretary because it's a big project that I have. So I don't think we flushed it out enough. I think we're kind of premature right now. And I'd like you to give me time um, and to already give it a, a, a focus of policy manual kind of like throws everything I was thinking about for it kind of in the air. And I, I really would like some time to present something a little bit more flushed out since this has kind of been my area of passion. I'm not opposed to it. And, and I'll note that no one has seconded it yet. So we don't have to do anything silly with Roberts. And but time has expired I, on this item. Oh, so unless anybody darn. wants to extend time. There are lots of people with hands up. But. Uh, I would motion to extend time five minutes. Mr. Bowen, you are not a member uh, of I, Yeah. <laughs> I will make the same motion extend time for five minutes. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Lucini can make that motion. So, Mr. Lucini. What's that? I'm sorry. Mr. Lucini moves to extend oh, time for 10 minutes. Is there a second? Wait, Mr. Lucini is also an alternate. Mr. Wentz not here. Gotcha. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll, I'll second, second it. Seconded by Mr. Smith. Is there objection? Yes. Ms. Harlos objects, so we will go to a vote. Hmm, how should we do votes? Raise hands. I guess we can do that. You could do yes, no, but you just got to be careful that non-members. All right, so if non-members, which includes alternates other than Mr. Lucini, can um, abstain from voting on this, so all hands are down. Uh, the motion is to extend time by 10 minutes. A yes vote would be to extend time, a no vote would be to not extend time could use the yes no to cast your vote now. Mr. Chair as an alternate I will also be voting because Mr. Hewitt's not Oh yes. Here. Yes, please do. Anyone else remaining wish to vote? Seeing none, the vote is 6 to 5, so time will be extended. Uh, if people could put their hands back up. Well, is it, doesn't that require two thirds? Oh, does it? Yes. Well, that was, that's not two thirds then, is it? So. All right, time is not extended and we are done with that agenda item. The next agenda item I have is scheduling of future meetings. And there were a number of emails on this. I'm not sure who to call on first. Um, I guess I can start with historical practice such that it is um, in the, la at least in the term that I was on and anybody can speak further to that. We had 
three to four in-person meetings and then ad hoc uh, electronic meetings as needed to be added. Um, there does seem to be interest in meeting more frequently and we're now in a uh, new world where electronic meetings are a lot more um, accepted. Um, so there, there's that, but ultimately it's up to all of us. Um, there was also interest on uh, the list about having a meeting and executive session in the near future, as well as potentially doing a board retreat. Um, so a, a kind of half day thing uh, to, to maybe do some more in-depth discussion on uh, key priorities. Uh, but with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to everybody to uh, decide what we want to do. Um, I have Ms. Hogarth, Ms. Adams, Ms. Bilyeu. Ms. Hogarth. Yeah, I'd like to move that we uh, meet monthly electronically. Um, I, I don't want to make it part of the motion, but I would like the meetings to be understood to be held to no longer than two hours unless there's some extenuating circumstance but um and not to conflict with our in-person meetings so in a month where we have a regular in-person meeting then we wouldn't do it but i would like us to just meet uh at a regular day like a sunday evening every month uh there's no reason we shouldn't we could have an abbreviated agenda reports can and should be submitted in writing anyway. Um, and we could just address immediate concerns and listen to members. Ms. Hargoth moves to establish a practice of meeting monthly electronically, no longer than two hours. Uh, is there a second? I second that. Seconded by Ms. Ebke, is there objection? Going once. I object. Okay, there is objection, so we'll enter debate on that item. Um, I'll go. I'll keep going down the list as it is. Um, and uh, next, I have Ms. Adams and then Ms. Bill. You, Ms. Adams. So I really like the idea of us meeting at least monthly while still maintaining a minimum of four in-person meetings in a year. Um, I I'm very very concerned that eliminating those face-to-face -face meetings are not going to be the benefit to this committee that um, some may think. Um, but I would like to see us do a much better job at rotating those in-person meetings and getting to places where maybe we haven't gotten so that we're accessible to members that don't always feel like we're accessible. I don't think we do them a service by continuously going to the same places or only looking at major media markets. We have a whole lot of members in the breadbasket of this country who feel very abandoned by the national party. And that's partly on us. And this, I think we should fix it. This is not germane to the motion. The motion had, sorry. Would you mind well, restating? It, restating it, it is, I'm program? just adding to the motion. I support your idea of meeting monthly, but I do think we still need to meet in addition to a minimum of four times in person. And I think we need to do a better job of rotating. Ms. Hogarth, just so I can clarify, did your mo your motion said that would be in addition to the in person meetings? Is that correct? correct? Okay, correct. So I didn't say I didn't say that, and I apologize. Um, all right, I have Ms. Billu and Ms. Zepke. Ms. Billu. So two points on this. One, uh, I would like to clarify: um, the, Does the maker of the mo motion intend that if in a month where we are having an in-person meeting that we would forego the uh, electronic meeting for that month. Um, I, I would like to ask that question. And then I, the other point that I would like to make is my concern about having um, monthly meetings is that we are going to become a board that micromanages staff and micromanages committees. And that is something I absolutely do not want to happen. So um, I think we need to be very mindful of the more we meet, does that mean that, we're, that we now are creating more work for ourselves and that work winds up being micromanagement of, of our organization? Um, because I don't think that's, that's really what we're supposed to be doing. So I just want that to be, um, for people to bear that in mind. And then if the maker of the motion would just answer the question as to whether or not those monthly online meetings would be foregone if we are meeting in person on those other months because I agree with Ms. Adams that we should absolutely not be replacing our minimum of four in-person meetings per year. 
I'm, I'm sorry. I can clarify. <clears throat> yeah. um, I meant monthly meetings, and in months where we are not traveling, then those meet. That's why I didn't want to the two hours necessarily in the motion, because in months where we are not traveling to meet together for a day and a half, then we would have we would meet presumably electronically. So if I could restate it, it's to meet four times a year and in the other eight months to meet electronically. I suppose, or to meet 12 times a year, four times uh, in person. Okay. But I guess that it comes to the same thing. Okay. Uh, does that answer your question, Ms. Bilya? Yes, thank you. Okay. I have Ms. Ebke and Mr. Molman. Ms. Ebke? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, um, I've long believed that, that we need to meet monthly. I think we need to limit our time um, of, of meetings uh, when we're not in person. I agree that um, meeting three to four times um, outside of the, in the, the electronic environment is a good thing. By the same thing, by, by the same token, we need to be nimble and flexible ourselves because we really don't know um, what's going to be happening over the next um, six months to 18 months or whatever. So um, I think if we say monthly, um, I would prefer probably the third Sunday of the month, just because I believe, and maybe Mr. Hagen can clarify, but that would give us time to get treasurer's reports from the previous month and to be as up to date on that as we can. Thank you. Uh, long list. I have Mr. Molman, Ms. Harlos, Mr. Phillips, Mr. Nicola, Mr. Valente, Mr. Lucini. Mr. Molman. I, I just, I, I originally wanted to clarify that it was when we were not meeting in person. It sounds like that is the case. The only thing I'll also note is that uh, meeting more often tends to mean shorter meetings. So that's a good thing. Thank you. I have Ms. Harlos and Mr. Phillips. Mr. Harlos, uh, excuse me, Ms. Harlos. Apologies. I think you're muted still. Okay, okay. I'm absolutely in support of this. I've been wanting this to happen for a long time. Um, and in one sense, I'm going to disagree with Ms. Bilyeu. I, I don't think it actually is going to result in micromanagement. I know some people are gonna disagree with the statement that I'm going to make, but I don't think we've been managing at all, at all. I think actually we've been quite bad at that. So um, I don't think we're in danger of micromanaging we, until we begin actually managing some. So I think monthly meetings will, will do that. Um, the email list is, is a poor substitute and we see how often the written word gets misunderstood. And I think people get along a whole lot better if we are more talking and less writing Thank you, Ms. Harless. I have Mr. Phillips, then Mr. Nikayla. Mr. Phillips? Um, <clears throat> I've been a big fan of this idea for a long time as well. Um, and uh, we got a lot of pushback from it on it last term. So I'm hoping that we don't this term. Uh, in For one, one main reason, which it is very difficult once an e-ballot is in motion to make it a motion to amend that motion, um, which is much easier to do in, it, in, a, in a setting like this. Um, so I will be, I'd be supportive of this. Um, and while I've got the mic, um, if a point of personal privilege is Mr. Buffman still on the call. He is I on am. the list. Yeah, there you go. Mr. Buffman, if you would take my seat at the table for a short period of time, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Sure. I have Mr. Nikayla, then Mr. Valente. Mr. Nikayla. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm, I'm not opposed to the idea of monthly meetings. Actually, as a matter of fact, with the Libertarian Party of Florida, we do every Sunday evening around this time, we have meetings. So the first week of the month, I have a meeting with my region reps. The second week, I have a meeting with my uh, committee chairs. Then I have an XCOM meeting on the third weekend and the fourth weekend is an officer's call. Uh, if we decided to do this, I certainly would not be able to participate on Sundays. I actually just got off of a EC call around 7.55 because we do have our EC calls. So I don't know if there's any other members on the committee that would have scheduling conflicts with this. But if we decided to do an e LNC meeting as opposed to a roundtable informal discussion, 
um, which I was sort of hoping that it would be something more informal to discuss for two hours. But if we're, if, if it's really a sense of a body that uh, uh, we, we plan on doing this monthly, I'll most likely not be able to participate uh, eight out of 12 meetings of the year. Um, and I suppose uh, Mr. Sex would have to flex his muscles a more on the board and that's fine. And, and I'm okay with that. But, um, but if we are sticking to Sundays, just an FYI, I probably won't be able to participate. Um, other than that, um, if, if it decides to be a, a formal meeting once a month, I think there's some benefits to that and I could see the reasoning behind it. Thank you, Mr. Nikela. I have Mr. Valente, then Mr. Lucini, then Mr. Roudsep. Uh, Mr. Valente. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, yeah, I, I rise in support of this. It's a uh, great idea for us to, to be able to get together, uh, be able to work uh, with each other, avoid the, the email list swirl that we can get into. Um, I wholeheartedly support this. And uh, most of the other points I wanted to make have already been made. So uh, thank you. Thank you. On a personal uh, privilege, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to, um, Ms. Adams is going to sit in on this particular vote for me just for a few minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Lucini. Yeah, I, I hate to be that guy. Can we call the question? You can call the question. Uh, is there objection to ending debate and proceeding to a vote? Mr. Chair, point of information. Yes, Ms. Adams. Can you please restate the specific wording of this motion? We will. Uh, Ms. Harlos, do you have the wording in front of you? I have Ms. Hogarth's original wording, and then you had restated it, which was <laughs> different, and I'm not sure what is the agreed one here. Sorry, uh, we kind of... This is why I'm confused. Well, why don't you read, read it, this? and let's see. Yeah, why okay. don't you read it? Yeah. One second here. I, this is what I had that was a meld of um, what Ms. Hogarth originally said. It was to move that we have four in-person meetings per year and eight electronic meetings in the months in which we do not have in-person meetings. Ms. Adams, that sounds does that clarify for you? Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Uh, is there objection to the motion still? If I could just make one quick point. Uh, the been closed. The only, thing I would, the only thing I would actually uh, say is the, uh, eight in-person meetings that we have throughout the course of the term, if we could rotate them through all of the different regions and make them into real uh, events, maybe accompanying with a fundraiser or something like that. I think generally we try to do that for the in-person meeting, um, but that'll be a second thing that we do if this uh, All right. Motion's been made and seconded. There, the question's been called. Um, let's proceed to a vote. Um, is anyone unclear about what we're about to vote on? I, I, have, I have a point of information, Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, uh, so let's, you know, we we have this kind of thing rule that if you miss two meetings in a row, uh, you can be removed from the, the board. Is that gonna also apply to the eight online meetings? I don't know the answer to that question. Um, so far, it hasn't for special meetings. E-meetings are considered special meetings and not regular meetings. So according to the policy manual, no, it would not. And if we added this somehow to the policy manual, we'd have to address that. Yeah. But this has been brought up before for e-meetings. Does that answer your question, Mr. Smith? OK. I mean, sort of. <laughs> All right. I appreciate it. Uh, sec will the secretary please call the roll? Okay, one moment. Let me set up the ballot because I wasn't sure how you were going to do this. I just need to copy my template. And then we have, um, I think Ms. Adams still sitting in for Ms. Bilyeu. We have Mr. Ferreira sitting in for Mr. Hewitt. And unless Mr. Coburn is back, I think we have Mr. Bowen sitting in for Mr. Coburn. His Mr. Power Chair, lineup. point of information. Yes, Ms. Adams. Uh, Richard Brown is saying in the chat that based on the motion, these e-meetings would be regular meetings, not special meetings. Can we get clarification? I, I'm not sure how he gets that based on the motion. The mover would consider them either. Um, I have no problem with the secretary's interpretation. 
Well, with the body's indulgence, Ms. Hogarth, would you like to amend your motion to clarify this point? Okay, four regular in-person meetings and eight electronic special meetings in the months without in-person meetings. All right, Ms. Hogarth Sorry. moved to amend uh, to make it four regular in-person meetings and eight special electronic meetings. Second. There is a second from Ms. Adams. Is there objection to that amendment? Seeing no objection, that amendment is adopted. All right, time has now expired on this item, so the secretary will please call the roll. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Bowen? Yes. Ms. Epke? Yes. Mr. Hagan? Yes. I will vote yes. Mr. Friera? Yes. Ms. Hogarth? Yes. Mr. Longstrath? Absolutely. Yes. Mr. Molman? Yes. Mr. Nikala? I abstain. Is Mr. Phillips back in the room? Mr. Um, Buffman? Yes. Mr. Routsap? Yes. Ms. Sarwark? Yes. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Lucini? Yes. Okay, Mr. Chair, the vote is 14 yes, zero no, one express abstention. Uh, I will vote yes. Thank you. Ms. Secretary. All right. That is uh, it for that item. Um, is there interest in scheduling that meeting now or do we want to do that electronically? Um, if we want to do it now, we will have to extend time. I believe, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, that we need to run a scheduling conflict thing questionnaire. A doodle poll, poll if you will. All right. Yes. Ms. Secre uh, Madam Secretary, would you be able to? Uh, I can do a doodle poll. All right. Thank you. Um, Mr. Nana, did we miss your vote on that? Did I yes. not have Mr. Yeah. Nana on here? You either called and didn't hear me or, or whatever. I, all I right. It's all good. I you don't vote. have you on my new list. See, that's the, I got mm. you on here now. What was your Thank vote, you. Mr. Nana? My, I voted I, yes. Thank you. Thank you for alerting me to that. Next item we have is the selection of the executive committee for 10 minutes, five minutes, five minutes. Mr. Chair, for point of personal privilege, I am back in the room. Oh, excellent. Welcome back, Mr. Phillips. Um, so the appointment of the executive committee. So we're in an interesting situation where um, uh, five of the seven people who were on the last executive committee did not carry over terms. So we've got Mr. Hagan and Ms. Harlos and then a bunch of vacancies. Um, the executive committee in our rules consists of the four officers and such LNC members that we want to add in addition to that. Um, generally, at least it's been my observation, it's been an odd number of people in order to have an odd number of people on the committee. So for instance, the last term we had three people and I believe that was Mr. Redpath, Mr. Lark and Mr. Goldstein. Um, so um, it's now incumbent on us to prepare the executive, to populate the executive committee. It's empowered to operate um, on behalf of the LNC in certain areas in between meetings. So it's certainly a very important committee. I've been thinking very long and hard about um, who, because uh, I wanna make sure that the executive committee represents the broader committee as a whole, as well as uh, has a good mix of both experience and uh, interest level in the various things that our committee does. So, uh, and a number of you have asked me to make a, a suggestion for uh, who uh, I think might be good to add to the executive committee. So uh, here it is. Um, I would like to propose that the executive committee consists, the additional three members consist of Senator Ebke, Mr. Longstreth, and Mr. Phillips. I think the, um, it combines two people who've, uh, who are not on their first term uh, Mr. Longstreth and Mr. Phillips, uh, who've got a number, uh, a wide array of experience uh, in a number of different areas along the party. Mr. Longstreth um, 
doing a very good job calling into the, uh, the staff meetings all the time. And, and I think that's important to have that perspective. Um, Mr. Phillips, certainly a very able regional representative and, and following a lot of what's going on in the country. And then Senator Epke bringing a, uh, although a first term member, our number one vote getter in the at large race and bringing a lot of perspective from her time as a legislator and um, in the, the nonprofit world. And I think together, the seven of us, uh, when you add in the four officers, will represent the committee as a whole well and do a very good job um, advancing our goals. So with that, I will turn it over to uh, discussion on, on, the, uh, on it. I have Senator Ebke, Mr. Valente, and Ms. Adams. Senator Ebke. Sorry, um, actually, my hand didn't come down from the last time, oh. uh, but, uh, but 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 I thank you for the suggestion and uh, would accept it. Thank you. Uh, I have, let's see, Ms. Adams, Mr. Molman, Mr. Routset, Ms. Adams. So I I like um, the thought process of having some at larges and some regional reps. I would prefer two regional reps and one at large to the executive committee because I think that um, that's gonna provide much better balance on that executive committee. And as much as I love and respect Ms. Epke and we have worked together on some summits and I hope we will continue to do that. I would like to see someone with more prior LNC experience in that position. Thank you, Ms. Adams. I have Mr. Molman and Mr. Routset. Mr. Molman. Um, I, I had a point of inquiry. Are we allowed to have more than seven? I mean, at some point it gets silly if it's the whole LNC, of course, but um, are, are we permitted to have only seven or are we allowed to have at least seven or, or what are the rules on this? There's no limit. Okay. We could actually have fewer then, than seven um, under the rules. Okay. And then my second question would be, are there any other members of the committee who are interested uh, in serving in that capacity just to find out what interest is out there? I guess now would be the time to say it, right? Right. All right. Mr. Roudsup and then Ms. Harlos. Uh, I, I would. Sorry, I didn't unmute fast enough. Okay. Ms. Is Bill, you expressed interest. Actually, uh, Mr. Molman uh, asked my question and I will pass. All right. Uh, Ms. Harlos. Learn to be quicker on the unmute. Um, I, it, it's been my experience just in hearing things in the past that, and some people are probably going to really strongly disagree with me, that it is considered a show of confidence in the chair to give him the executive committee he asked for. So I would be inclined to give Mr. Bishop Henchman the executive committee he asked for. Um, me personally, if I were going to recommend someone else, it would have been Ms. Bilyeu. Um, but I just know in the past that that's kind of been a signal of the confidence in the chair. So I can tell you that that's where I'm landing is that I would like to give Mr. Bishop Henchman what he has asked for. Is that a motion or an observation? It's a motion. All right. Ms. Harlos moves to appoint Ms. Ebke, Mr. Longstreth, and Mr. Phillips to the executive committee. Is that That's correct? my motion, yes. Is there a second? second? I second, Lucini. Seconded okay. by Mr. Lucini. Is there objection? Objection. I move to divide. There is objection to the motion, and you move to divide. Please. All right. Hang on. Oh, he's getting out the book. Yep. Hey. We do have Richard Brown here if we need him. Right. Let's hold the Holy Sorry. Scriptures. Don't believe it's debatable. Right. Unclear as to what the division is, though. That's what's like my to question. Take each member individually. Oh, thank you. All right. Ms. Adams moves to divide. Is there a second on the motion to divide? Mr. Chair, I didn't think motion to divide required a second. I thought it was basically if somebody asked for it, they got it. Ms. Adams framed it as a motion. 
Um, if may I answer, Mr. Bishop Henchman? Sure. Um, Mr. Phillips, that is when the motion tries to join two absolutely distinct things into one motion, then it could be divided without a second upon the request of one member that happened at convention. But this isn't unrelated items. This is this needs a second. This needs a second. But there, the there's always a lot of confusion on that. Thank you for the clarification. Um, I will second her motion then. All right. The motion has been made and seconded. I don't believe it's debatable, so we'll proceed to an immediate vote on it. And uh, we'll do the Zoom poll vote on it. So vote yes to divide the question. And if that happens, we'll have three separate votes on the committee. And uh, if not, uh, vote no. So go ahead and vote now. I'm sorry, Mr. Chair, can you repeat those instructions? If you wish to divide the question, vote yes. If you do not wish to divide, vote no. Yes, I would, would raise my hand is which one's yes, which one's no, which one? You should have a yes, no button there under in participants. If you can't find it, just tell me how you're voting and I'll add it to the total. Please note that Ms. Adams is still seated for region seven. Okay. I can't seem to figure this out. I vote no. Anyone wishing to vote or change their vote? I have it as six to 10, so the motion fails. So with that, we'll proceed to a vote on the uh, undivided motion. Uh, there was objection, so we'll have to do it as a uh, roll call vote. Ms. Madam Secretary, are you able to yep. call the roll? Um, yep, just one second. Let me prepare the ballot now that I've added Mr. Nana. Uh, Mr. Chair, point of information for the vote. Yes, um, Mr. Phillips. As I'm one of the people listed on this, obviously I cannot vote on it. It is should I? Is it it more? Is it better for me to let my alternate vote, or is it better for me to abstain as a as a region? I wouldn't say you're pro you're prohibited from voting on it, and whether you vote on it or let your alternate on it is really up to you. Okay, well then uh, I will step aside. I consider it a I consider it a, a, a conflict of interest, um, okay. but I will let Matt vote for me. Okay. Are we ready? Ready when you are. Ms. Adams. Yes. Mr. Bowen. Mr. Coburn is back. He'll be voting. Oh. Okay, Mr. Coburn. Mr. Coburn, I'll um, come back. I'll come back to you, Ms. Epke. I'll abstain. Mr. Hagen. Yes. I will vote yes. Mr. Fiera. Yes. Ms. Hogarth. Yes. Mr. Longstreth. I'll abstain. Mr. Molman. Yes. Mr. Nana. Yes. Mr. Nikayla. I vote aye. Mr. Phillips. I'm oh, sorry, Mr. Um, you were you were yielding to your alternate. Um, Mr. Buffman. Yes. Mr. Routsap. Yes. Ms. Sarwark. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Mr. Lucini. Yes. Mr. Coburn? Yes. Okay, Mr. Chair, I have 14 yes, zero no, two express abstentions. I will abstain. What was the vote total? Oh, so it then would be 14, zero, three. All right, congratulations to our new executive committee. The next item we have is the selection of the Advertising and Public Re Publication Review Committee, um, which would be no more than five members, all LNC members. Um, Ms. Bilyeu, would you, um, would you mind explaining the committee and what it does and what it doesn't do? <laughs> okay, so the uh, Advertising Publication Review Committee is responsible for uh, looking over every piece of uh, material that goes out to the public. Um, these are not 
internal communication reviews. These are things that are going out to the public. So any emails that are sent out, any flyers, any anything that goes out to the public or to membership in general. Um, our job is to review it for policy, platform, bylaws, any violations related thereto. Uh, our job is not to edit the documents. Our job is not to opine on these, on the information presented. Um, we are tasked with just making sure that there's nothing going out that puts the party in a negative light. That's probably the most subjective uh, of, the, of the aspects that we would consider. But for the most part, we're just making sure that nothing goes out that, that represents any violations of our platform or our policy or our rules. Um, we, it, it, the, the discussions that we have, uh, so, so essentially the, the staff when creating materials runs it through our, our inbox, the APRC's inbox, which there's five of us. And uh, we, we each review it. And if we have an objection, a stated objection, we, we you know, respond to it that way. And then we have some deliberations on it and then make a ruling as to whether or not it needs to be scrapped or uh, if our objection can be um, remedied by whoever is creating the piece in order for it to go out. So we typically have, a, we need a majority of the people on the committee to, to say that something's okay to go out. Unfortunately, um, things that go out on social media are not always, we're not always able to see those before they go out, just depends on how our social media is functioning at the time. Um, whether they're being scheduled publications or not. I know a lot of things that go out on social media are very timely. And so we're not able to have like the typical six to 24 hour time period to review. But um, if an objection is raised after the fact, then a piece can be pulled. So just, just something to keep in mind. I would say anybody who wants to be on this committee, you must, you must be able to check your email multiple times in a day this is a 24 seven responsibility. There is stuff in the inbox all the time. And we do not want staff having to put things out that haven't been properly reviewed um, by, by the committee. Uh, and then after the fact, having to pull it after all the damage is done. I will say that we have had very, very few things that have ever, in my experience, I think this is, yeah, this was my second term on APRC. And uh, we, we've had almost, I mean, little to no issues with it. it. It's functioned pretty well. There have been times, however, that things have gone out without actually having been approved, if you will, by at least um, a, a majority of the committee. And fortunately, those things were, were okay. But uh, uh, the, the deliberations on the APRC are also confidential. So if you are going to be serving on that committee, you need to understand that you cannot share what the pieces are that are coming through or what's pending or what you're, you know, what you decided or what you as a committee decided to scrap. You cannot share that information with anybody other than the person who perhaps the staff member who perhaps created it. Um, so, so, you know, you, th there's a lot of responsibility with this. And again, the most important thing is that you are, you are frequently checking that inbox to, to make sure that you're reviewing these things, especially when there's something that could, that is because of the subject matter potentially controversial or he, you know, could create some heated discussion online. There are times as the chair of the committee that I will ask for every single member of the committee to at least um, sound off on a piece before I will as chair be the last vote for it to go out. Even if I don't necessarily object to something, I still want to be the last person to to say to green light it and there are some things that I will ask that every single member of the committee sound off on before they go out so you just need to really be willing to be vigilant on it um, and and especially when it gets closer to election time if you're on this committee the expectation is that you're going to be you're going to be really really uh, vigilant in your APRC inbox so excellent thank you Ms. Bill you I'm going to put all hands down for a moment um, before I open nominations, does anybody have any questions or clarifications for Ms. Bill Yu? Because it's important you understand how this committee works before we proceed. Mr. Coburn and Mr. Molman. Mr. Coburn. Um, I'm just curious to hear from Ms. Bill Yu um, what her opinion is on the um, advantages to running this through this committee rather than running it through staff. Ms. Bill Yu. 
I'm not sure I really understand your question. It's staff is the ones who are typically creating the material. And so Is there a reason that you feel it's appropriate or other members of the committee feel it's appropriate for uh, everything that we publish to be approved by a committee rather than approved by staff? So I guess this is this is a little bit difficult to explain simply because of the way the policy is worded, but we don't have to necessarily explicitly approve everything that goes out. I think what we're really trying to do is just make sure that we don't have any objections to anything that goes out. So essentially the material is being created by staff and you know through through whatever process they're using, whether it's a, a if it's a director sending it to us, then clearly the director has approved it. Um, but we're really just looking for things that are objectionable. We're not looking for, we're not, we don't have to approve them explicitly. Things can go out without actually being quote unquote approved by the APRC because we recognize that this is a timely, some of these things are timely and the staff needs to be able to do their job and put stuff out. Um, and they will do that if they don't hear from us, you know, within a certain time frame, depending on the urgency of the piece. Uh, it is currently our policy that this this um, this is the policy and the procedure. So if you're asking me whether I think the policy needs to change right now, I'm not prepared to answer that question. Um, as of right now, this is the policy. I do believe that there needs to be some oversight on what we have, what we put out. People who represent the LNC specifically need to 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 be seeing some of the things that go out in our name. So as of now. I don't see any reason why this should change um, because I guess I don't, otherwise the staff would be creating things without any oversight, potentially. Mr. Chair, point of information? Uh, point of information from Ms. Adams. Can you uh, read for us and for some of our new members the specific policy concerning APRC and what it specifically says, please? I can. I. I, th I feel like Ms. Bilyeu gave a very accurate description and the language in the policy manual runs longer than a page. It is, however, on page 25 to 26 of the policy manual. I just feel like it's important for people to understand that per policy, um, there are certain time limits built in on different types of communication. And unless an objection is raised, those communications auto publish per our policy. Right, thank you. That's a good way of putting it. I have Mr. Molman and then uh, without objection, Starchild. Mr. Molman? Yes, uh, two quick things. Number one, no, I don't wanna be on this committee. Number two, um, and, and more importantly, I know that the APRC has uh, in, in the past kind of operated behind the scenes and I'm, I'm wondering, I, I think with bylaws proposal 11 that passed, what that's going to mean is they can still deliberate because it is political strategy behind the scenes, but they're going to have to take public votes on things. Is that correct? Ms. Bilyeu, or did you want me to answer that one? Yes, go ahead. I'm, I'm not quite sure I understand what, what he's talking about. Um, it was the transparency bylaw. Right. Votes can't happen in executive session anymore. Well, I, I don't believe that what we do is actually executive session, but okay. okay. Uh, I have- We don't actually, I mean, in most cases we're not voting on things, so. Right. I have Ms. Harlos and then without objection, Star Child from the gallery. Mr. Bishop, I'm sorry, I, I don't mean to interrupt. Can I follow up on that very quickly? Just because- uh, all right. I apologize. So in the past, I know that, you know, the publications themselves have been kept behind because the whole point is that they don't go out to the public prior to being, you know, the time ticking away or uh, disapproval. Um, and I guess my point is, is that that's still going to have to be a policy, right? It, that it's going to be sent to the committee. They're going to have to decide yes or no, right? But we, but if it's a no, then we don't want that being out on some public list because that's a no, right? Exactly. It's like, nope, that, that. I think I can, I think I can clarify this. This is a veto yeah. committee. So stuff sent to the committee, a majority of the committee, at least that's how it's operated, can exercise a veto over it. They're not approving stuff. So I'm a, I'm a current member. I also do not want to be on this committee this term. Um, I ex my When I respond to things, I say no objection. Mm -hmm. 
other members say approve, but I say no objection because to me that's the to me that that's how the committee operates is we're veto committee not approving things. Okay. If, if it is an approval committee, um, which I don't think it is, but if it is, it probably would be in violation of bylaw 11 as you're suggesting. Okay, okay, understood, thank you. So, you know, my answer to that would be, you know, let's leave it to the committee to decide how to operate on this and follow, find a way to operate while following that bylaw. Uh, just, Ms. Just, if I may, just um, to, to expand yes, a little bit on that, if, if we are in a situation where our votes must be recorded or reported on this, I don't know that that necessarily would be an issue, but it's the content of the thing that was not approved or that was objectionable that should not be made public because that's so, the whole point of this committee vetoing that piece is to not have that material be public in our name. So that, I guess, might be the distinction as far as what gets reported publicly or not. Yeah. All right. Ms. Harlos, and then without objection, start off from the gallery. And then I think we'll be out of time. Um, so we'll have to extend. Ms. Harlos. Um, I agree with the chair that this is a veto committee and not an uh, approval committee because things are really, silence is deemed to be consent on this committee. Um, you have to actively object in order for something to be yanked. Otherwise, it, it goes out. One thing, though, I do think we need to do and have needed to do in the past, and I, I've been thinking about it a bit, is we are supposed to report to the LNC if something doesn't get published. Hmm. So that is, I think, would make it in compliance with the bylaws. Um, with as much detail as can be publicly made possible when something gets disapproved um, or however we want to put it vetoed um, that needs to be publicly reported it, including the members that were okay with it and the members that weren't uh, we haven't been doing that and i think we probably should and there probably should be an aprc report mm -hmm. given every regular meeting that talks about the functioning of the AP, aprc um, and that has never been a tradition. Um, so I'm not saying like, cause Ms. Bill Yu has been an excellent chair and if she's willing, I hope she does it again. Um, but I do think maybe that's something we need to do. And I am interested in serving on this committee again. I, I've been on it two terms now. We are out of time for this item. So the chair would entertain Move to extend Ms. Adams. For five minutes. Ms. Adams moves to Second. extend by five minutes. Are you able to make motions? I am. I'm still seated at the table. You called right. on Ms. Billy Yu to give he information. Is still he is still right. seated, yes. All right. Ms. Adams moves to extend by five minutes. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Hagan. Is there objection? Seeing none, times extended. I have, um, let's see, without objection, Starchild from the gallery, and then without objection, Ms. Robson from the gallery. Uh, I have objection. I know Star Child's going to kill me, but we only have five minutes, and we need to populate this committee. Right. Um, if I'll we were going to extend it for longer, I'd have no issue. But right now, we're just extended for five. All right, there is objection, so we'll move to a quick vote on whether to allow Star Child and Ms. Robson to speak from the gallery. Um, use the yes/no buttons. Vote yes to allow them to speak. Vote no to not. David Valente is Region 5, just to reiterate. Anyone not having yet voted? I have it as three to nine, so we will not hear from those individuals. Um, I have Mr. Molman with his hand up. Mr. Molman. You're muted, sir. It was still up from before. I'm good. OK. Um, all right. Let's open nominations then. All right, Mr. Valente. All right, Mr. Chair, I would like to nominate Ms. Harlos and Ms. Billiou. Ms. Harlos, do you accept? You said already that you would. Uh, Ms. Yes, Billiou, absolutely. Accept? Yes, I will, I will be happy to serve again. Thank All you. right, uh, Ms. Adams. I was um, had my hand up to nominate Ms. Harlos and Ms. Billio. Okay. <laughs> Ms. Harlos. I'm ahead, David. Um, I would like to nominate uh, Mr. Smith, who had indicated to me before he was interested, if he is still interested. 
Mr. Smith, do you accept? I do indeed, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. All right. Others? Mr. Longstreth. Mr. Chair, I'd like to uh, self-nominate. All right, Mr. Longstreth nominates himself. Mr. Nikela. Mr. Nikela. Oh, I apologize, I was muted. Um, I would like to nominate myself and if there is still room on this committee, I'd also like to nominate David Sexton as well. All right, Mr. Sexton, do you accept? <clears throat> I do. All right. Mr. Chair, point of nominate of information. Um, can we can it wait till we finish all the nominations? I suppose I just wanted to know how many slots we were nominating for again. There are five. we had enough nominations to cover that. There are five, but there's three hands up. All right, uh, Ms. Epke. I'd like to nominate Valerie Sarwark. Ms. Sarwark, do you accept? Yes, I do. Thank you. All right. Any other nominations? Ms. Epke, did you have another one? Okay. I'd like to nominate Ms. Epke. All right, Mr. Lucini, you nominate Ms. Epke. Ms. Epke, do you accept? She does not. <laughs> Any remaining nominations? Um, I count seven. So Ms. Harlos, how are we gonna proceed on, the, on a vote on this? For the Mr. Chair. Mr. Mr. Chair, Mulvin, I was trying to I was trying to make one more nomination. So. Oh, okay. I haven't closed nominations, um, so we can do that. Mr. Mullen? Uh, I believe uh, I believe Ms. Adams was on this term, and if she's willing to serve again. No. No, sir. No? no thank you. Oh, okay. oh, I knew that one. <laughs> no, thank you. Ms. Adams resigned from this committee because I am not available every two hours, 24-7. I'm not. But I appreciate okay. it. Thank you. Are there any remaining nominations? Because we have not closed nominations. Mr. Chair, I move to close nominations. All right, there's a motion to close nominations. Is there any objection? Seeing none, nominations are closed. Ms. Harless, tell us about OPA vote. Yeah, um, so I can start an OPA vote ballot and you will get it in your LP email boxes unless there's a different address you'd like me to send it to because I see Richard smiling. Um, and uh, we need to decide though the method of voting is it approval? Is it ranked choice? However, we're doing this and I can get a ballot sent out. Is there any objection to approval? That was easy. All right. So we'll do it approval. And Ms. Harlow, I just put the seven names. Well, for everybody, yeah. put the seven I, names in the chat. I have it in my in my minutes. Um, did we I would move to recess for five minutes since some people might want to use the restroom and it would give me time to get the ballot out. Second. Motion's been made Third. to for five minutes and there's a second. Is there objection? Seeing no objection, we're recessed until 1046 Eastern. Ms. Harlan, do you have my secondary email address? Uh, yes, Richard, I always know to do your secondary and my secondary. Thank you. And Karen Ann, don't, don't forget that I'm seated for uh, Susan. Yes, I've got it.
while we're at ease, somebody has sent me an email address where if we email by September 1st, we can have our presidential nominees on the Guam ballot. Uh, Mr. Chair, could I ask you to forward that to me and to uh, Nick Dunbar, please? This is Christopher Thrasher. Yes. Right. Thank you. It is 1046, so I will call us back. Ms. Secretary, where are we at on the ballots? I'm almost done. Okay. I've had to get uh, re-familiar with something here. All right, we'll they stand these until you're- uh... Yeah, they changed the uh, interface on me a little bit here. I hate when you do that. Mr. Chair, I'm still waiting on a ballot. Yep. Everyone is waiting on a ballot right now. That's, uh, that's what I'm doing right now is putting everyone's names and they, they totally, they changed the interface on me. I will save this file. So next time we do this, I won't have to do each one individually. I meant to do this earlier and the day got away from me. Tucker is back, correct? What was your question? Tucker is back, correct? Yes. Okay.
add everyone, but let me just count that I have 17 here. I am missing one person. I'm going to go through the names of the emails I have here. Oh, no, I got it. Joshua, I missed you. Okay, 17. All right. You should expect them momentarily. All right. While we're getting those sent out, I'm going to go ahead and proceed to the next item and vote when you are able to. Uh, the next item is the ballot access committee. We are, and I did send some background materials on this, we are, as written, the policy manual requires us to repopulate the ballot access committee as it expired at the end of the, uh, when the gavel came down at the convention. Um, because Mr. Redpass no longer a member of the LNC and because the policy manual requires that the ballot access committee consist of five party members, no less than three of which shall be LNC members selected by the LNC with the, um, the chair selected by the LNC chair and the non-member selected by the LNC chair. Um, I think it is nuts that we change the membership of the committee right now when they're on the ground in 13 states doing hard work. Um, I also think it's nuts that if we would have to choose between getting rid of one of Mr. Redpath, Mr. Thrasher, or Mr. Winger. So I've proposed a policy manual change which would increase the membership of the committee to seven, which allow us to add um, both a non-member and an LNC member and otherwise extend the life of that committee until, what date did I put in? September 30th, after which we'll then appoint a new committee. And that'll be after the completion of the current ballot access drives. So uh, that's what I've proposed. Um, if the committee doesn't want to do that, then we would proceed with um, appointing the uh, LNC members of the committee. No Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, I'll move it. All right, Mr. Smith moves the policy manual amendment. Second. Is there a second? Second from Ms. Adams. Is there objection? Seeing no objection, it is adopted. Um, we do. With the policy manual amendment we've just adopted, they did create a new LNC member uh, of the committee, which we can populate if the LNC wants to do that. Um, currently, we have Mr. Nana and Mr. Phillips, and so we would need one more. Um, so we can open nominations for that. Mr. Chair, point of information. Yes, Ms. Adams. Are there any LNC members that have an expressed interest in serving in that capacity? Uh, Not currently uh, on the committee? Speak now. Um, I'll do it. Mr. Molman. I um, actually have an interest. Um, Carlos, okay. Others? Yeah. Yeah, I was going to I was gonna nominate, uh, I was gonna nominate Ken Molman anyways. Okay. So it's perfect. But Mr. Molman and Ms. Harlos, is there anyone else? Mr. Sexton? Uh, yeah, I would also uh, be interested. All right, Mr. Sexton. All right, uh, let's see. Any other nominations? All right, somebody that's annoying. What is that? I don't that know. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever they were, they seem to have muted themselves. So thank you. Um, all right. So, Mr. Mr. Chair. Yes, Ms. Arliss. Is it possible to speak to for a moment to our nomination? Yeah, we can do that. Um, I just want to make sure that there were no other nominations there. All right. Uh, we'll go, uh, Mr. Molman, Ms. Harlos, Mr. Sexton. Mr. Molman. As a point of information, real quick, just so everybody's aware, I did receive my email ballot. So if you are waiting for some sort of message, uh, refresh your box. Thank you, Mr. Longstreet. Mr. Molman. Okay. Um, very quickly, I was on this committee in 2016, coming out of the convention, uh, where we did achieve 50 plus DC. Um, I'm going to share my screen here just a moment so you can see what I've been working on. 
because I've been tracking this stuff. Um, this is the current where we're at. And you'll notice the things in red are the danger. Um, the thing in yellow is a warning. I, I do keep track. I do think 50 state is extremely important. And um, it's something I'm interested in seeing us do. And I do have a good relationship with all the committee members. And not to say anyone else doesn't, but I, I've worked with Red Path, I've worked with Winger, I've worked with them all uh, in, in other capacities um, or, or on this committee. And so that would be basically my stump for myself is that I've done this job and I'm willing to serve again. Thank you, Mr. Mullen. Ms. Harless? Um, yes. Some people have heard my spiel before on the things I think that the LNC should be doing, which is much less than what we do. And one of them is some things without which we will never have success at elections. And one of the, and the two things are ballot censorship and voting reform. Um, to that end, I'm on an advisory board in Colorado for RCB Colorado um, to work towards that. And I'm, I'm looking to get much more informed and active in both of those capacities, because when my time on the LNC is done, I can see becoming an activist in those two areas. So I, I would start to like to get that experience, particularly since I do think that is what we should be doing. So rather than just flapping gums, I would like to actually do it on the things that I think we should be doing and spend less time on the things I don't think we should be doing. And it really ties into LPDA and our history very well to be able to update that kind of data. So that's why I'm interested all of a sudden when I really hadn't been the past two terms, I've been given this a lot of thought. Point of information, Mr. Chair. Uh, let's hear from Mr. Sexton first and then we'll, I'll take your point of information. Thank Mr. you, sir. Sexton. Uh, yeah, ballot access is something that I'm uh, extremely passionate about. It's something that we've been working on for the last four years in Tennessee. Um, unfortunately, the only thing we've succeeded at is finding ways that didn't work. So we're still looking for that way that does work because our laws are so terrible here. But um, ballot access is something that I would like to see. I would like to work with and see what works in, in the other areas so that we can also use that in Tennessee and like Ken said, get eventually the 50 state ballot access that we're after. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Phillips, you had a point of information. Yes, sir. Um, given the nature of the motion to extend the current uh, committee tenure, is this appointment we will be voting on, will they be up for reappointment when we refill re, uh, this committee or will, we, or will they stay on? Yeah, it's a good question. This, uh, my answer would be this would be in the nature of filling a vacancy in the current committee, which would expire September 30th. So we would be reappointing all of the committee members then. Okay, thank you, sir. Point of information uh, or point of personal privilege, I, I still have not received a ballot for the previous vote. Okay. Madam Secretary, uh, ballot for Mr. Valente. Okay, I will either get you. Can you uh, just send him the code? Yep, that's what I'm working on, getting a code for him. All right. Uh, all right, we've heard from the three candidates. Um, I guess we'll put together uh, another. Ms. Bilyeu will be coming back to the table. Okay. Uh, Ms. Harlos, can you go ahead and put together another ballot for uh, the ballot access committee vacancy as well between uh, Mr. Molman, yourself, and Mr. Sexton? And is it approval voting? Is there any objection to approval voting? Approval it is. And are we, um, how many uh, How many are getting elected, appointed? One. One, okay, thank you. And if nobody gets a majority, we'll figure out what to do. Well, it's approval, hopefully. Hopefully somebody gets a majority. <laughs> hopefully everybody gets a majority, so. All right, next item is the selection of the Employment Policy and Compensation Committee. I believe I am the only remaining person on the LNC who was on last term's EPCC. So I will summarize the policy manual section on this, which is on page 28 of the policy manual. This is essentially the committee that um, works with the chair on personnel relations and personnel matters. 
So uh, I'll just read it. The EPCC shall develop documents, procedures, and guidelines relating to job descriptions, compensation ranges, hiring, training, performance reviews, promotion, progressive discipline, and termination. Uh, the LNC may supersede such documents if, if they want to. Uh, the EPCC, it's really important that they're available to staff to discuss on a confidential basis any issues relating to the policy manual. And uh, it consists of three members of the LNC, uh, which includes alternates, I believe, other than the LNC chair. Um, any questions on the EPCC? I'm gonna lower hands here. I think these are artifacts. Seeing no questions, let's open for nominations. Ms. Sarwark. I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Sorry, I would like to nominate Laura Ebke, please. Okay, Ms. Ebke, do you accept? I do. Okay. Uh, Mr. Roudsup. I would like to put my name in uh, nomination. All right, Mr. Roudsup. Mr. Lucini. I'd like to put my name in nomination. All right, Mr. Lucini. Ms. Bilyeu. I'd like to nominate Aaron Adams. Ms. Adams, do you accept? I do. Okay. Mr. Chair? Yes, Ms. Arles? So sorry to interrupt. Um, there was somebody who told me that the primary was stepping back to the table and the alternate was stepping back. Yes. That's region seven, Bill U. Adams. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. <clears throat> Others for EPCC. Mr. Chair, uh, how many nominations do we have? We have four for three spots. Thank you. Well, then I would like to nominate Stephen Nicola, even though he hasn't said anything yet. I know he has no, uh, he has uh, plenty of experience in dealing with employee matters. Mr. Nicola, do you accept? Thank you. Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, all right, so, sorry, Nicola. So I have Ebke, Roudsep, Lucini, Adams, Nicola. Are there any other nominations? Uh, Mr. Longstrap. Mr. Chair, I'd like to nominate myself for this committee as well. Right. Mr. Longstrap. Any others? Chair would entertain a motion to close nominations. So moved. moved. Moved by Mr. Hagan, seconded Second. by Mr. Phillips. Is there objection? Seeing none, nominations are closed. Uh, Ms. Harless, can you prepare a ballot for that as well? If you could please put those names in chat because as I've been doing this one and I will do that one immediately after this one. Can we speak to our nominations? Oh yes, let's do that. Um, Let me do this randomly, one second. I would like to thank somebody, but I don't remember who they were, who gave me a 20-sided dice at convention. So I will uh, roll it six times to assign numbers to each of the people, and then we'll go in that order. So Senator Ebke, you are 11. Mr. Roudsef, you are 10. Mr. Lucini, you are 20. Ms. Adams, you are nine. Mr. Nikayla, you are 17, and Mr. Longstreth, you are also 20. Region one, man. All right. Wow. So, Mr. congratulations Rout on the critical hits. <laughs> All right. So, in that roll off, Longstreth will go before Lucini. All right. I have then Ms. Adams followed by Ms. Ebke. Ms. Adams. Yeah, so I've got over 25 years of management experience in major hospitality firms including Hilton and Radisson. I have a love them and leave them management training and incredibly good um, relationship with staff. Um, I have a very strong understanding of contracts. 
um, a stronger after two terms on the convention oversight committee. I've probably read more contracts in the last term than anybody else on this board um, as far as relationship to LP things. Um, I think I could serve this committee very, very well and bring some good strategies and um, good communication with staff strategies. I also see um, a place for the EPCC to send in some, some metrics, some performance standards and metrics that we're seriously lacking in. And I would appreciate your support for this position. Thank you. I have Ms. Ebke, then Mr. Radset. Ms. Ebke. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Many, many years ago, I served as a restaurant manager in fast food industry for about seven years while my husband was in uh, medical school. So I have a basic understanding of, um, of the private sector side of things. Um, I served for 12 years on the Crete School Board. Um, we have a staff of about 350. Um, I served on the personnel committee and was involved in on these kind of employment issues, including being on the hearing, as, as serving as a hearing officer on a number of occasions. And then my time in the legislature um, ha, has also given me um, a significant amount of experience as well as a number of nonprofits. So I would be happy to work um, in, in, this, uh, in this capacity. Thank you, Ms. Epke. Mr. Roudsup and then Mr. Nikayla. Mr. Roudsup. Currently, I run a business. Uh, I have multiple employees, both W-4 and 1099. So negotiating contracts is something that I do on a regular basis. Prior to running a home inspection business, I was an operations and HR manager for DSW Shoes. And I uh, ran the basically all of the HR for the entire North Carolina, South Carolina, and Virginia market. Uh, so having hundreds of employees, uh, that are bringing HR issues in my direction is something that I have experience with. Thank you, Mr. Nikayla and then Mr. Longstreth. Mr. Nikayla. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, like I said, I was a director of operations for, uh, for my family's Wendy's franchise. Uh, we have over 200 employees that I directly oversee. Um, we don't have an HR, I am that HR. So when there's conflicts between employees or there's hiring or firing or anything like that going on, I'm the one who's called and, and I take care of those issues. Uh, dealing with contracts, employee contracts, employee manuals, all those things, training, et cetera. That's my day-to-day, -day. that's what I do. I do operations, I work with people. Uh, they don't teach you that in business school, you kind of learn it on your own. So uh, that's what I do, I'd be happy to do it for the party. Thank you, Mr. Longstreth and Mr. Lucini. Mr. Longstreth. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, uh, my experience uh, comes from uh, uh, being an operations manager uh, in the retail world specifically for uh, about uh, seven years um, with the uh, Lowe's companies. Um, I oversaw directly about 100 employees uh, as my direct responsibility. And then we had about 175 that were on uh, property. So I, I understand employee relations and, and how to interact with staff on all sorts of different levels. I understand the hiring and firing processes. Um, and I understand what it takes in order to make sure that employees are are feeling welcomed in their working environment and feeling like they have people that they can talk to. Um, I have been pushing to have performance reviews uh, done for two years. Um, and so far they have not, uh, that has not happened. Um, I would like to see that this term we effective immediately begin the performance review process. And that's something that I'd like to work with the EPCC uh, uh, to uh, help uh, help roll out some sort of standards and processes uh, in that area. Um, so with that, uh, I would really like your support. Thank you. Mr. Oh, I might also add, uh, I am also currently regularly attending uh, staff meetings uh, at least twice a week as it is and have been for the last uh, several months. Thank you, Mr. And Mr. Lucini. Yeah, so I've been, uh, the last 20 years, been managing people in businesses, everything from software to the oil field work from people who are high school dropouts to PhDs, lots and lots of PhDs. And I can give you three guesses as to which is more difficult to deal with. Um, uh, I'm very comfortable with the hiring and firing process and especially alternatives to firing, uh, performance reviews, corrective action and so forth. I'd appreciate your support in this. Thank you. Um, any questions or comments before we go to a vote on it or set up a vote on it? Mr. Phillips. 
Um, this is a very important committee uh, because it, uh, you know, whether they do a, a good job or a bad job could potentially leave us open to severe legal uh, concerns. And uh, while normally I am 100% in favor of new people jumping right in and getting their hands dirty and jumping right into positions authority and, try, and given trial by fire, uh, one, as I already stated, this is a very important committee. And two, we have three members of the, that are nominated that served last term. They weren't on this committee, but all three of them made very valuable co contributions to uh, discussions regarding staff and compensation and, uh, uh, and contracts that have proven to us that not only do they know how to do the job, but they do, uh, but they know how it relates to our particular environment. Um, so I, you know, normally I would 100% support a newcomer jumping right in, uh, but in this particular case, I will have to support uh, Richard Longstreth, uh, Mr. Nikayla, and Mrs. Adams because they have already proven that not only can they do the job, they care enough to dig in even when it wasn't. Thank you, Mr. Phillips. Um, Ms. Harlos, can you go ahead and prepare a vote on that as well, a ballot on this, that? One. And I assume this also will be approval. Is there any objection to using approval voting? Oops. And it's three that we're selecting. I, I know they can select as many as they want, but I like to put in the voter email how many yes. will get elected. Okay. It is three out of the six. Sorry, our dog is knocking things over. So. <laughs> Have, has the um, ballot access committee ballot gone out? Yes, it has. Okay, I still haven't got any of the any of the ballots. Um, but uh, David, you're yeah. one moment here. I I resent it to your alternate one. Can you just give him the code? Yeah. That'll be faster. If you've not yet received, there's now two ballots that have gone out: one for APRC and one for ballot access. If you've not received either of them, message the secretary with that information. Our dog is uh, tangled in our microphone cable. <laughs> All right. Mr. Chairman, Mr. I'm having a hard time figuring out how to directly message the secretary here. My options are everyone or you or Mr. Fishman. Send me on Facebook. Okay. Ms. I would also add, if you're having trouble finding your email, do check your spam folder. Sometimes Opal Vote does make its way to that area. Ms. Harlos, are you okay being made a co-host so people can message you directly? I can't vote that way. I don't have any of those controls, so. All right. Facebook it is, then. Mr. I, I Mr. believe Chair. that if you type in, you can type in the name and you can then send a chat to that person. I tried. It doesn't work. Oh, maybe it's Mr. because Chair. I'm the host. That's why I can do that. I apologize. Okay. Ms. Harlos. Mr. Chair. A point of person are out of time for this meeting. So first, I would like to have a motion to extend time for the meeting. Much more the move. agenda do we have? I will second. All right. Who moved, and Lucini. for how long? Lucini. Uh, fifteen minutes. All right, Mr. Lucini moves to extend time from for fifteen more minutes. Is there a second? I second. There is a second from Mr. Roudsep. Is there objection? There being no objection, we are extended until 11.27. All right. Point of, point of information. All right, raise your hand and I will okay. call on you. Mr. Phillips. Sorry, sir, I'm having trouble with my phone and it wouldn't let me lower my hand. Okay, I can do that for you. Mr. Moment. All right, I, I'm just get, trying to get clarification because I'm sitting here staring at this ballot for ballot access and I'm on it. Are we supposed to abstain if we're no. Up for no. election. Okay. You can always vote for yourself. All right. I it's just is my I, view on it. Some people chose not to vote for themselves on ballots that they can do that, but there is no okay. requirement that you abstain from voting on elections that you're involved in. Oh, All right. Thank you, Mr. Hey, Chair. I need to know nobody I who still hasn't got what ballot so I can send you over Facebook a link and a code. I got the ballot access and I got the EPCC. Okay. Fernand, I have yeah. not gotten one, but I don't I don't have Facebook Messenger on my phone and I won't. And for some reason I'll do it over text right now. So text is fine. Okay. 
Uh, and I just Madam got Secretary, the EPC this... ballot, so there should be three ballots now that you're dealing with. APRC, ballot access, EPCC. I've only gotten the APRC one. Message the secretary. All right. Next item, consideration of executive session policy manual change. I also distributed this um, at the uh, convention bylaws proposal 11 was adopted and I've had numerous requests that we act expeditiously in updating our policy manual to reflect that change. Um, the, ch the, the language just tracks the changes from that bylaws proposal. Um, so what it now requires is that the LNC and all of its committees conduct all votes and actions in open session and executive session may only be used for certain specific purposes. Um, this is a narrowing Narrow. compared to our earlier, earlier policy manual, which gave a lot more opportunities for uh, executive session. So a lot of that language is struck. With that, I'll open it up for questions, debate, or comments, or motions. Mr. Mr. Chair, I'll move to Mr. adopt as, as proposed. Mr. Mullman moves to adopt as proposed. Second. Is there a second? Second. Seconded from by Mr. Nana. Is there objection? Seeing no objection, it is adopted. Next item of business is one requested by Mr. Hagan of the discussion of continuation of ad hoc committees. Mr. Hagan. Um, yeah, we had four ad hoc committees for the during the last term. And I thought maybe we should consider whether to for each of these, whether continue them or if the purpose has been finished. Um, probably the best way to go about this is I know members on here who have served on those committees and ask them if they think if the committee thinks that they should be continue have more work to do for this term or if they think that what they've done is is it and we should not be continued all right uh mr moman my hand up is an artifact i apologize okay anyone wishing to speak on this item ms harless um on the convention process committee i would like that to continue forward it really because of covid and everything that happened it didn't really do what it what we hoped last time and we still need better processes for reno and i don't think we really got out of that committee what we could have we didn't even get to test the scantron so i i would like that committee to continue and there's already been people who have written me interest and mark in chat um had also expressed some interest so that's one I definitely would like to see reconstituted. I have Ms. Adams, Mr. Ferreira, Mr. Phillips, Mr. Valente, Ms. Adams. Well, I understand Karen and Harlow's support of the convention voting processes committee, because let's be clear that's specifically what it was. I firmly believe that the proposed advisory committees um, that the chair proposed to us tonight will take up a lot of this slack most of these committees did nothing. We were lucky to get a report um, once or twice. They rarely met. It was a wasted opportunity. And I just think we should let these, these ad hocs die by the wayside and continue on with the advisory committees that the chair proposed tonight. Thank you, Ms. Adams, Mr. Ferreira, and then Mr. Phillips, Mr. Ferreira. I had a similar comment, but it was gonna be in the form of a question to you, Mr. Chair. Uh, where would you see these four committees falling within the uh, advisory committees that you had already proposed? Okay, um, membership support, I think would fall under activism and membership pretty cleanly. Um, youth engagement. So I have, I have two answers on youth engagement. One is it could also, it could also potentially fall under that same committee, activism and membership. The other answer I have on it is something we may want to consider on youth engagement and other kind of affinity groupings is setting them up in some form other than a committee. Um, so there's been an idea, it's been floated by several people that I've talked to this week. So, you know, I apologies for not 
attributing it to any one person. But um, when you sign up as a member, being able to join libertarian youth or libertarian moms and dads or libertarian lawyers or so forth. So not so much a committee of, I forget if it's five or seven people, but basically everybody who wants to fall in that category can join it. And as part of our membership and activism work, finding ways to engage those people. Um, so that'll be my answer to that one. Convention voting process, um, which I chaired this last term, um, it wasn't structured well. It was too big, frankly. Um, and uh, I had an original envision structure. We had to modify it as we passed it and it just kind of made it not, not functional. And somewhat ironically for who ended up winning the officers elections, Mr. Molman, Ms. Harlos and I actually worked very well together in coming up with essentially a Scantron solution for the, uh, for the convention, which we were gonna test at, at some state conventions. And honestly, I think it really would have done the trick to reduce tabulation time significantly. Uh, but then COVID happened and everything got thrown out. So Mr. Mullman's holding, I'm sure he's got a pile of Scantrons in his, in his house there for it. So, <laughs> cause we were pretty far along in that process. Um, I don't deny the fact that we, re we really do need to figure out ways to uh, do, do that better. Um, I don't know if a nine person committee is how we do it. Um, so that would be my answer on that one. And on the blockchain committee, um, I just speaking for myself, I need a better understanding of what we want that committee to do because um, I mean, I, I voted for it for creating it last time, basically with the understanding that they would come back to us with some explanation of what they wanted to do and, and what they wanted to pursue. Um, I have a vague understanding of blockchain. I'm certainly not an expert in it. Um, and I understand that there are potential applications in a lot of variety of different areas uh, of, of our operation. Um, and, you know, we, we had a bunch of applications. We had, I think, as many applications as we had spots. So everybody who applied got put on the committee. And then I don't remember hearing from it ever again. So um, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I'm willing to try again on that one and see if we can uh, get a different answer this time. Uh, but I guess that would be my answer to your question, Mr. Ferrara. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Phillips is next. Mr. Phillips. Um, the, uh, well, you answered my questions, so that's good, but I, I have some thoughts um, specifically related to the Youth Engagement Committee. Yeah. Um, the first one being that through extraordinary circumstances, um, they didn't get a chance to do what they were should have been able to do to you know keep it in polite terms I can say in public. Um, uh, and so I, 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 I don't like the characterization that they didn't do anything because I don't think that's fair to the members of the committee that served on that committee. Um, but I also, um, as I brought up earlier, um, I feel like that committee was, we were specifically instructed to could create by the delegates. And so I don't feel like I am comfortable with us doing away with the, the, that committee at this time. Uh, you know, we were, you know, as I remember correctly, it was something that was voted on. If I remember correctly, that was something that was voted on by the delegates in New Orleans. And so we, we're basically told to do it. And I would be very opposed to going against that direction. Uh, you are correct in that the, not the most recent convention, but the convention before directed us to create it. And then I certainly don't want to characterize it as they didn't do anything. They actually sent out a survey to all um, LNC members below a certain age and got very interesting data back. Um, and, and that data was never really presented to the LNC um, and, you know, I did get a chance to look at the report, the, I guess the draft report uh, summarizing the data and there were really interesting tidbits and morsels in there. And I'll see if I can get a copy of it to distribute to everybody because uh, that was interesting information. Um, I have Mr. Valente, Mr. Longstreth, Mr. Routset, Mr. Valente. Uh, yeah, so I, I mean, I, I would echo uh, Ms. Harlos's Suggestion that we continue with the convention voting process committee. Um, we do need to get that one. It's it's an emergent issue that we we need to 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 really wrestle with. 
Um, and I, I agree that we should keep the, the uh, youth engagement committee going. Um, but the other ones can be, you know, if we move on with your, your plan, uh, can be uh, wrapped up into the other uh, uh, committees uh, quite nicely. So uh, that's where I, I'd like to see us go. Thank Mr. you. Is your point of information? Um, is it an urgent one or can I add you to the queue? Well, it, I mean, either way. Okay. I will add you to the queue. Mr. Longstreth and Mr. Rodset. Mr. Longstreth? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, I would move that this committee solicit applications for the uh, convention voting process committee and youth engagement committees, uh, capping those applications for no more than five members to be selected at our next in person meeting. Mr. Longstreth moves to reconstitute the convention voting process and youth engagement committee at five members each and select second. members at the next meeting. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Nana. Is there objection? Objection. Have an amendment. Is let me ask it this way: Is there objection to not having more committees, or is there objection to? Because let's if there's agreement on these two, let's get that done. Um, if you want to add more committees, let's do that next. But if you're objecting to those two committees, then I'll hear the objection. I object to these. Okay, two. there is objection. So we will proceed to debate on this. Mr. Longstreth, do you want to speak to your motion? Uh, sure. So in hearing most of the uh, discussion this evening, uh, it sounds like there's still a real path for these two committees in particular. Blockchain seems a little bit up in the air. Membership support, it's not clear uh, exactly on what their mission was or has been. So I'm open to those in the future, but we do have a, a laid out process and mission for these other two committees. Uh, one of them was delegate introduced in 2018. The other one, I'm not sure exactly where it came from, but it was necessary uh, two years ago. Uh, I still think that in light of COVID, we, we have some opportunity. Um, we should be seizing this opportunity to continue to try to develop over the next two years, some serious ways that if something like this comes up, whether it is there or not, uh, we, we start to modernize a little bit. So I think these two committees in particular um, are, are of vast importance. I think five is a strong number uh, of people for a committee. I think that if we allow uh, the uh, committees to be populated at our next in-person meeting, that will essentially allow us to garner applications over the course of the next presumably two to three months uh, until we get to that meeting. And uh, then we will have time to review those applications and uh, cast our ballots there in person, uh, giving our membership uh, lots of time to consider whether or not they have the time uh, or energy to, to sign up for that committee. So for all those reasons um, and, and based on where this body was talking, um, I, I introduced the motion and urge your support. Time has expired on this item and we're one minute away from time expiring on the meeting. Um, Let's defer the meeting for a moment. Is there any uh, interest in extending time on this motion? Yes. Okay. You want to go ahead and extend for motion. five minutes? Oh. All right. Mr. Molman moves to extend by five minutes. Is there a second? Yes. A second by Ms. Harlos. Is there objection? Seeing no objection, we're extended by five minutes. Let's see. I believe I have Mr. Roud set next. I just want to speak in favor of Mr. Longstreth's motion. Uh, I believe that youth engagement is absolutely necessary, especially seeing that it is the target of many of the old parties. Uh, and we need to be on that vote as well. I have Ms. Adams next. So um, convention voting process is nothing more than an advisory committee at best Per our policy manual, plenary control of that convention belongs to the Convention Oversight Committee. That committee was created as a way for the past COC, in my opinion, to pass the buck. That process should have been and was being worked on by that committee. Mr. Molman and Ms. Billy, you can both speak to that. We had taken up uh, Scantron. So everything that that committee was doing was already being done by another committee. It's an absolute waste of time to do that until we do some serious work on the policy manual and change what the convention oversight committee is doing this is double dipping and all you're going to do is create conflict between two committees who do not work together who are working across purposes and i think it's a mistake thank you ms adams i have ms harlos and mr lucini ms harlos okay as the secretary who's now been personally tortured by our convention voting process i cannot disagree more strongly and the abuse I've gotten after the convention because of our process 
they are not, a, even if they're just advisory, even if it's just to make me feel better. We are convention voting processes are a hot mess from the medieval age. And right now, I have to tell you, I don't care whose toes are being stepped on, it needs to change. Because, and even if it is just advisory, the more minds on this, the better. I don't think anyone stepped on anyone's toes last time. I trust us to put the right people on. And I also have an amendment to Richard's motion on the convention voting process as in last time that the secretary and the chair will be non-voting ex officio members of that committee in addition to the five. That's a motion? Yeah, it's a motion to amend. Okay, Ms. Harlos moves to amend to make the secretary and, is it me? Yeah. Oh, great, okay, me, <laughs> the non-voting ex officio members of the convention voting process committee, is there objection? Seeing no objection, that amendment is added. We're back to the main motion. I have Mr. Lucini next. Mr. Lucini. Okay, I'm gonna do this as a compound thing. The convention voting isn't just awful. It is epically awful in the sense that is actually making me not want to go to 2022. Um, <laughs> that's reflected in a lot of other delegates as well. Um, I believe that I I'm actually, I'm, I'm going to move to divide the question between these two committees, the youth and the convention voting committee. Um, I'm undecided about whether or not this committee should actually go forward if it's properly the role of the convention oversight committee. There has to be a solution to this voting problem. And I'm going to defer to other people that have more experience in this in terms of the bureaucracy of why it wasn't better this time. COVID, really, that is the answer. Bylaws. Well, bylaws, we already knew we were dealing with, but it was COVID. Yeah. It really just screwed everyone over. First past the post. All right. Mr. Lucini has moved to divide. Is there a second on the motion to divide? Yes, yeah, so that's actually what my hand was up for. All right. So that is seconded. Is there objection to dividing? So the question is divided between the convention voting process and the youth engagement committee. There are a lot of hands up, but let me ask, is anybody moving to add either blockchain or membership support um, so I can recognize you and we can maybe get all these votes done? Uh, Mr. Chair. Mr. Smith. Uh, I have a point of information about the blockchain committee that may, I don't know, sway some people possibly. So I don't know. I just had my hand up to, to talk about that. I mean, I'd are still you, be in the queue, but let me um, let me I ask you this way: Are you move anything? Are you moving to reconstitute it? No, I will. I wasn't ready to move anything. I just had a, a, a point of information. Okay. Um, there's a long queue, and we're at time. Um, but let me ask: Does anybody want to move to reconstitute either of those committees, or we'll let them lie? <clears throat> Uh, I I would move to reconstitute the the blockchain committee. Okay. Before we, before we do that, Mr. Chair, I was trying to unmute my mic. Um, the, if we are these things that we have to reconstitute today, or could we say we could we change our mind? You know, at our next meeting, say okay, hey, we thought on it, we want to reconstitute that. The LNC can always change its mind. Well, then I, I <laughs> then that's you know just my thought process, uh, Mr. Smith, that uh, we could probably wait on that. I haven't, I haven't heard. Okay. Of well, I just, uh, I just, uh, yeah, there hasn't been a second. I just, I really wanted to say that. All right. The blockchain so committee, you are, you are moving or are you not moving? Uh, I'll re I'll resend that if we can, if we can make sure we take care of it in the next couple of months. Cause that was something that was going to also possibly help with convention voting. It, well, if the committee why don't you was populated. Why don't correct. you just move it then? Okay. No, I'll well, move okay. It. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes I don't know when to shut up. Do you want to do it the same as the others five members? Uh, I think that one was seven, wasn't it? Is it five? It's whatever you want to make it now. I think it should be seven. I think it should be seven. All right. Mr. Smith moves to reconstitute blockchain with seven members. Is there a second? Stephen McKenna will second. 
Michaela second. All right, so that one's in there too. We are out of time. The chair will entertain a motion to extend time. Move to extend. I'm going to go ahead and say 10 minutes because that way we save ourselves an extra motion. All right. Mr. Mullman moves to extend by 10 minutes. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Hagen. Is there, oh, excuse me, Mr. Nikayla, is there an objection? Objection. Uh, this is on extending time of the meeting. So, I mean, I guess this is the only vote we have left. We got to announce some votes too. So, uh, so all right. So, there is objection to extending time. I'm going to clear all the hands and go ahead and vote yes or no. A yes extends time by 10 minutes. A no does not extend time by 10 minutes. Mr. Chair, as a point of order, if this fails, we immediately vote on all remaining questions and close our meeting. Is that correct? Yes. I am showing it as nine to five, uh, which is a nice song. I will vote yes and make it 10 to five, giving it the two thirds to pass. So we are extended by 10 minutes. All right, everybody's hands are down. Sorry about that. Go ahead and put them back up if you wish to speak to the pending motions or call the question. Mr. Smith. Can I speak to my motion real quick? Yes. Uh, so as one of the three people that, that actually brought the blockchain committee proposal to the LNC uh, prior to the 2018 national convention, the, the, the thought process on that was that it would it would exist as a committee to find creative ways to institute blockchain into um, into the party, including how to use blockchain voting for our party nominations. Um, unfortunately, the people who, who brought the proposal to the LNC didn't have the opportunity to populate that uh, particular committee and it was populated with quite a few people who are not blockchain professionals um the chair preston smith is great but kind of was you know he was kind of had his feet dragged through the mud because he didn't really have a team around him that could get those kinds of things done so i think it's a really important committee for us uh going forward i think you know using blockchain technology in our party processes shows the crypto community that we care about them and, and what they do and it also gives us awesome ways to, to do things in this party and so um, I would really like to you know populate that with good people that are are uh, you know professionals with blockchain and and the processes so that's why thank you mr. Smith mr. Molman and then mr. Valente mr. Molman uh I, I am fine with all three of these committees existing. The main thing, it, especially with convention process, um, and, and voting process, and also with blockchain, I think there's a, a real need to have cross communication between our committees. We did a little bit of that at the end of the last um, pre-convention. I'd like to see more of that. I think blockchain, as, as Josh just noted, has an opportunity to help multiple different committees. I think convention voting process, if it exists, needs to definitely be working with both the bylaws committee and the convention oversight committee. Um, it, it's one of those things that there's there's definitely bleed over here. And if these committees are being used to bridge a gap, I'm cool with it. Um, if they're just gonna work in their own bubble, then they serve, they're not gonna, we're gonna get the same result is what I guess I'm getting at. So as long as these committees are gonna work and bridge gaps and work together with other committees, I think they're they're worthwhile. I have Mr. Valente and Mr. Coburn. Mr. Valente. In the uh, interests of time, Mr. Chair, I'd like to call all questions. All right. Is there objection to ending debate and moving to votes? Objection. There is objection. So we will have a vote on uh, Mr. Valente, would you mind? Mr. Coburn is the only remaining person on the queue. Just giving him 30 seconds. Yeah, go for it. All right, Mr. Coburn. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to briefly speak against the Youth Engagement Committee. Um, I think it's a very inefficient way to go about engaging uh, young folk. Um, I would encourage, and I think that looking at the chair's uh, suggested committees, um, it might be something that would be handled under the campaigns and elected officials. Um, proposed committee because I think that most youths are engaged 
when, especially in party politics, when they are being activists and volunteers. Um, so for example, I think the most activity that we've had with youth in the Libertarian Party as of late has been with the um, Youth for Johnson Wells organization or whatever that was called. Um, I do not think that a committee is properly cast or properly equipped rather to deal with this. Um, and I don't think there's much appetite for a Libertarian Party specific um, organization such as YAL or SFL. Thank you. All right, that exhausts the queue. We have three votes. One on con reconstituting the convention voting process committee with five members plus the secretary and chair as ex officio non-members, excuse me, ex officio members. One reconstituting the youth engagement committee with five members. And then the third vote is uh, reconstituting the blockchain committee with seven members. Uh, is anyone unclear on the three votes that we're about to take? Madam Secretary, can you call the roll on convention? We'll start with convention voting process, five members plus secretary and chair. Secretary and chair as ex officio non-voting. Yes. Okay, one second here. So that means the existing committee. Okay. Ms. Bilyeu? No. Mr. Coburn? Yes. Ms. Epke? Yes. Mr. Hagen? Yes. I will vote yes. Mr. Fiera? No. Mr. Valenti? I vote yes. Mr. Longstreth? No. Mr. Molman? I'm going to abstain. Mr. Nana? Abstain. Mr. Nikaela? I vote aye. Mr. Phillips? No. Mr. Radsa? Rob, sorry, I'll get it right next time. No. Ms. Sarwark? No. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Lucini? No. Mr. Chair, the vote is tied seven to seven. Would you like to vote? Uh, I will vote yes. God bless you. One moment, let me set up the other one. That was convention. Uh, Are we doing? Youth engagement. Okay, one moment. Ms. Bill Yu? No. Mr. Coburn? No. Ms. Epke? No. Mr. Hagen? Uh, no. I will vote no. Mr. Fiera? No. Mr. Valenti? Uh, no. Mr. Longstreth? Uh, I just want to clarify, this is for youth engagement, correct? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Mr. Molman? Yes. Mr. Nana? Yes. Mr. Nikaela? Aye. Mr. Phillips? Yes. Mr. Routsep? Yes. Ms. Sarwar? No. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Lucini? No. Um, Mr. Chair, the vote is seven yes and nine no. I will vote no. That makes it seven to 10. Let me set up for the blockchain. One sec, I just need to title that one. Youth, one second. And now, okay. So this is the blockchain committee. Ms. Bill Yu? 
No. Mr. Coburn? No. Ms. Epke? No. Mr. Hagan? No. I will vote yes. Mr. Fiera? No. Mr. Valenti? Yes. Mr. Longstrath? No. Mr. Mullman? Ah, uh, yes. Mr. Nana? No. Mr. Nikala? Aye. Mr. Phillips? Epstein. Mr. Routsep? No. Wow. Ms. Sarwark? No. Mr. Smith? Yes. Mr. Lucini? No. Mr. Chair, it is five yes, 10 no, one express abstention. I'll vote yes. Just crazy, man. Heaven forbid we make our party a little easier. Mr. Smith, could you mute? Because uh, some of the stuff you're saying may not be appropriate for uh, conversation. All right. So that is um, our votes on that. Ms. Mr. Chair? Um, has everyone, I think I've heard from everyone who was having issues. So has everyone been able to vote on those three for OPA vote? Yeah, but I got mine in. Yeah, I got mine in too. Let me ask so, you the negative. Does anybody still have issues voting on the three ballots? Are you prepared to announce the results, Ms. Harlow? Yeah, I just need to stop voting on both of them. So we'll do APRC first, stop mm -hmm. voting. Okay, and let's see. We were electing, was it, I look at the number again. APRC Let's, is five. Okay, one second. Okay, I will be able to, I can share this on my screen, but the ones with the most were myself, Ms. Bill Yu, Richard Longstreth, Stephen Nikala, and David Sexton. All right. Congratulations and condolences, and I am excited to be freed of the APRC email. But <laughs> Thank you for your service, Jim. Yes. Okay, um, let me congratulations, do. Can Joe. someone remind me, is the chair selected by the committee, by the LNC, or by the LNC chair? I believe by the committee. Good. I think, yeah, it's by the committee. All right. Ms. Bilyeu, would you mind organizing the next meeting of it to immediately hold a chair election? I will do that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bilyeu. All right, ballot access. Okay, one sec, let me hit stop voting on that. And that's just one, one person. Yes. Ken Molman. Congratulations, Mr. Molman. Mr. Chair, if I may, real quick, any of the other candidates who wanted to be on ballot access, I'm sure that the uh, committee is not going to object to them hanging out either. And if they want to volunteer time, I mean, 14 states. Mr. Chair, point of information, can we get a repeat of the APRC members? There, there seems to be some question in the chat. Okay, Ms. Harlos, would you mind repeating the APRC winners? One moment. Um... <clears throat> it was yourself. I caught that. Whitney, yeah. Richard, yeah. Stephen, Nikayla, and yeah. David Sexton. Okay. All right. And then do we have EPCC? Yep. Just one sec. Stephen, do you, while you're, while Karen is doing that, Stephen, do you mind if we do your item as? like a first item at their next meeting? Sure, that's fine. Okay, thank you. How many were we electing was three? Uh, three. Aaron Adams, Stephen Nikala, and Richard Longstreth. All right, thank you. And Mr. Molman, yes, I'll, I'll get with you. I'd love to volunteer. I don't need to be on a committee to do work. All righty. We are past time. Mr. Again. Chair. Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Molman. Um, just checking. Uh, the ballot access committee, because it's been extended, that's just going to be continue to be Mr. Redpath, I presume, as the chair. It's all of the current members, plus now yourself, and then one non-LNC member <laughs> to me, I think. So. Okay. 
and then uh, now the chair is just still whoever was chair, which I think is Mr. Redpath. So. Mr. Fishman, um, EPCC was Aaron Adams, Stephen Nikela, and Richard Longstreth. Thank you. All righty. Um, that brings us to the end of the agenda. Is, does anybody have anything for good of the order? I do, Mr. Chair. Um, Mr. Phillips. Mrs. Ms. Secretary uh, Karen Ann, can, I'm sorry, I'm very tired. Could you, not today, but uh, could you get us the language of the motion in 2018 that yeah. passed the convention? Because I'm still questioning whether we have the authority to not reconstitute it. Um, um, so, I so. can, yes, I can. And I'll find for you the language in a meeting where we did kind of discuss that because we discussed whether we really had to do it at all. And I remember it that we looked at the language and the language was for at least that term to be an ad hoc committee, but it wasn't in order to put it in our policy manual. And the discussion pretty much implied without explicitly saying it was binding on that LNC term. It, it was a resolution, not a bylaws or policy. Right. Right. Okay, that, 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 if you know the answer to my question, that's fine. I, uh, I just, you know, I'm really tired, so I wasn't remembering for sure. Um, Mr. Um, Mr. Chair, I do have a favor to ask you if you could please just unilaterally set an executive committee meeting for the concerns that you know that I needed addressed. An executive committee or executive session of the full? executive session. That's what I meant. Because okay. you can you can unilaterally set a meeting. I could do a doodle poll and give you dates when people are available. Let's do that. Okay. I do have two things real quick. Can we please get the doodle poll for the in-person meeting out sooner rather than, than later? It will uh, be. I think it's very important that we address that as quickly as possible. And I just want to thank everybody. This has been a fabulous meeting, and we have had so many that were not. Um, that it kind of feels like an early Christmas. So thank you to everyone. If you want to fight, we can fight, man. I'll stay on and thank, thank you I mean, all for giving that. me the opportunity to cast my first, Thank you all for the opportunity to cast my first tie vote. I didn't expect it in the first meeting. So uh, God, we got I that. Mean, this was really, really, really like I can't even thank you all so much. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Chair. All right. Uh, Ms. Bill, you you have your hand up move to adjourn oh okay well i think that'll happen automatically unless somebody does something differently so if there's no further motions or business we stand adjourned at 11 51 p.m eastern time thank you everybody good night mr. everyone yeah, i will thank stop the live stream now yeah. mr fishman please send me the zoom recording yep thank you